Myself to the edge, lying in the way. Been testing myself by the worst. I've been pushing my mind to the most. I've been loving the people around me, but I'm so paranoid. I'm so paranoid.
Hello and welcome to the Play Versus Spring 21 High School Championship featuring Fortnite. Hello everyone, my name is Panda and with me today is somebody's gun. What's going on, my guy? 
Hey, what's up, Panda? It's been a while since we got a cast together. I'm excited to get after it here today. We got some awesome Fortnite action going on. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be a good, good time. For those of you at home that do not know, we're going to be playing some solos today here in this championship. Now, just to let you know, this is the schedule for today and tomorrow. If you don't know, it's going to be solos, Eastern Finals happening right now. And then immediately after this, we're going to dive into the West finals for solo again all this happening today so somebody's gun myself will be bringing you all the action throughout the day now tomorrow it's going to be all about trios we got the eastern finals there at 5 30 p.m eastern standard time and then immediately after we have those west finals for trios as well so lots of great stuff going on make sure to tune into the channel and we'll be bringing you all the action here live from play versus yeah, I can't wait. Whether you like solos or trios, there's a little bit of everything. But right now, we are focused on the solos for today, starting with NA East. And here is our scoring format. There's a 20 elimination cap. I mean, honestly, if you're dropping 20 bombs in this <laughs> championship, good for you. I don't know that that's going to even happen. But you get four points per elim, one point per placement for 21st all the way to 70th. And then you start racking them up as you go to 6th to 20th. Then even more placement points come through in that second to top five. And of course, five points for that sweet, sweet victory royale. I got to say this, right? Looking at the format, there are so many opportunities here to pick up some points. And again, like if you're in a championship format, like Gunn said, I mean, you really got to be a W keen everybody to get 20 eliminations. But nevertheless, these are some talented players here that we're going to be watching let's go ahead and check out some of these names that we're going to see here live on the broadcast we have deceptor crunch tp uh keo uh, aglor matthias a lot of great names here in the community uh gun do you see anybody that kind of stands out to you curix is one and dash rooney are two names that i've seen around not sure that I, I can necessarily give you their whole backstory but i know they are solid capable players that we should be watching out for here today then of obviously we have a full lobby so tons more names we have cooper noel rug heckler nasser you got bev in there echo strizo noisy seb so many players that are going to be competing here today and this was after a long grind throughout the play versus season so these are the best of the best here in the high school solos and i'm excited to see how these guys do in this round here panda i'm excited too and just so everyone at home knows listen these players they grinded to get to this point right but what's next for them you may be asking actually believe it or not top 50 from today's event go on to play in the play versus cup coming in June. So if you make it through today in that top 50 slot, you get an opportunity to compete in that play versus cup. So lots of opportunity here. Lots of players going to be grinding out, trying to make their way through into one of those top 50 spots. But I'm going to say this, right? With only 100 players playing, there's a good chance if you are consistent and know what you're doing, you're going to make it onto the cup in the summer. Oh yeah, you gotta farm that placement points. That that is the name mm. of the game here today. Try and get to the end game and then consistently make it through those moving zones. Whoever does that, gonna be our clear winner. But it's the top 50% are gonna be moving on to that play versus cup out in June. We got 50 players from East, so our lobbies and games here right now. And then a little later, we got West who will also have 50 players moving on into that cup. And I'm interested to see if we're going to have varying styles. Right now, there's a lot of talk. Peppers are the meta. But is yeah. anyone going to find something else that we get to see here today and surprise us with some new techniques? Well, and if I'm not mistaken, right, I saw this morning that bouncers made their way back into the game potentially, but I don't know if they're in competitive because again, people have been struggling to find them. I've seen a few people find them throughout today's games, but no confirmation if it's gonna be in competitive. So maybe we'll see some bounce pad action because you already know that's the number one way to rotate. Oh, no doubt. And it's one of the more balanced items that you have to be able to mm. rotate. So we'll see how that plays out if players are able to find them here today. 
literally just introduced this morning back into Fortnite. So it will be quite interesting. You know, what is going on? Are we going to see some hype plays with the bouncers? Maybe even a, a pepper bouncer combo? Question mark. Maybe one of you guys hear this and, mm. you know, do something a little crazy. We'll see. We'll see. We got the action coming soon. Panda, what, what are you looking forward to most today? So I'm looking forward to seeing how the infantry rifle and the tactical shotgun are going to play an effect in a tournament like this. Because again, people competing up to this point, they didn't have the opportunity to utilize those weapons until now. If you don't know, for those at home, they just incorporated these weapons back into the game. So uh, it, it could make a pretty big difference here, especially when you look at the, met the shotgun meta alone, right? You had the pump shotgun. You had the primal shotgun and with the primal shotgun being nerfed to the degree that it was it almost became unviable against the the epic and legendary variants of that pump shotgun so i'm excited to see how this plays in effect in today's tournament because this is the first major tournament if i'm not mistaken uh, since they've included that dan we'll have to see what these players are deciding to choose lots of players from what i've seen in dreamhack nf and cs have been going for those pump shotguns over the tactical shotguns but who knows we're ready you are in game this is game one of the play versus high school championship featuring fortnite and we're diving right in with hydra who appears to be contested off spawn at flush factory what a place to contest right so obviously if you don't know for those at home there is the opportunity to split this drop because there's not a ton of loot here right um now it's in in all the team-based modes, you see these teams splitting it. But as a solo player, I don't know if I would take the risk of trying to contest somebody else here. But Hydra says, you know what? If I eliminate Scrapper here quickly, I should be able to get this all to myself. And these are probably the first time these players are going up against one another. So game one and two really are going to be figuring it out. Who is who and who gets to dominate their drop spot? Who gets to claim it? That's what these guys are doing. As we see Hydra already trying to pop this big bot. Doesn't have the shotgun and doesn't sound like Scrapper really has one either. But no, he proves me wrong. Looks like he has that pump shotgun coming in. And Hydra looking just simply to back out of here. Get some heals off. He has no materials in a poor situation without that shotty. Yeah, and now just trying to get the shield off as he could. A nice little edit play there. You know, as he phased through that ramp, he was able to get those shots off. And hopefully it's going to hold him off. But no, you see Scrapper here just trying to get involved. And he takes him out quickly. Hydra, unfortunately, going down there very fast. But actually, it looks like there's another player here. Now actually looking at Log Jam with Snaxy. Uh, this player is just trying to hold on for dear life here, Gun. Yeah, this is uh, another place that I, I would expect lots of solos to land. You know, solos give you the opportunity. You don't need as much loot. So we'll get to see how this plays out. And Swedify is the one contesting here. Neither player has that pump shotgun, the purple pump that you get from Gut Bomb. And it looks like Swedify just getting on out of here. So Snakey going to be able to grab that shotgun or just potentially wait for that engagement to happen with the npc now we're checking out another poi here's hide and seek over at holly hedges another player here lots of contests there's 100 players it's not like uh like trios that we've seen all season with only 33 teams and it really drops down the number of places that teams are at now 100 players really turns into just a, a wild show throughout the map as everyone's trying to claim their spot yeah and it's a nice change of pace to watching solo events versus these team events because solos play out so differently than all these other team events just like you mentioned though even drop spots alone make a dramatic difference but now though we actually switch back over to snacksy snacksy just uh trying to stay alive here is another player is fighting up against and no the quick pump shot comes out and he is eliminated unfortunate for him but fortunate now for aag as he's uh just trying to take some shots from hide and seek here rotating around holly he was able to at least alpha the poi this game looks like hide and seek is going to continue to hide he's not sneak seeking today just <laughs> wants to get out of this poi and ag aag gonna be moving on out in a good spot getting all of holly hedges to himself these are one of those places you got to be careful though there's a lot of 
little spots where solos will land off to the east or just north of this area and players will rotate in to holly hedges giving you a late contest and this is a possible player walking into this area so here is I don't, I don't even know what, what his name actually is, but it looks like he won an off-spawn fight nearby outside <laughs> of Holly Hedges. And going to look to disengage any more fights. No shock at Emma. Not the best position for this player. So I'll tell you who this is. This is Asian Jeff with TNA. So he has changed his name. He's still trying to get that payment from Ops early on, but you know who is getting payment. Nasaruni taking out that player so fast. He knew that he had the advantage in that engagement and just quickly eliminates him. Now it's all about kind of stepping up to the plate uh, and, and seeing what these players do. Because again, in a solo meta like this, you, you really don't know. And it's hard to predict where people are going to come from, where they're going to rotate to. So uh, this is going to be exciting to watch as Nasaruni just continues to rotate on the edge zone. And now we see hide and seek has moved on out, but he ran into the player that was able to win log jam. And now this fight's continuing. Swayify right on the wall here. Hide and seek goes for the shot. Swayify jumps Ooh. in the box and takes him down quick. And he's throwing the L's all over the place. The Swayify definitely utilizing that emote to the fullest effect today here, folks. As now we switch over to Volix, looking to uh, try to repeat what this other player was just doing. Now though, Volix not being able to get any kind of advantage here uh, on the other player. So the other player is just going to say, you know what? I'll sit here in this box while you disengage. And so many fights happening all around the map. We're just jumping around trying to show you guys all of the action taking place. And we have Igna right here, right outside of Lazy Lake. He's looking to get in, but this player actually jumps out, is able to take up and into another box. He looks like he's in a poor position. I can't exactly see what that name is right now. Igna is in the driver's seat in this fight, and that's Rhino. We gotta take a quick peek at Rhino and Igna in this in engagement. The peppers, the shield, the loot, all in Igna's favor. Absolutely. We talked about the peppers before and, and the impact that they're gonna make in this game. And looking at the inventory, this could be a good sign for him. He's already popped one, and it's helping him kind of take this fight as quickly as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, it does look like the other player disengaged, and now it's just all about rotating. So if Igna is careful, he will be able to either get this elimination or rotate away. In my opinion, it might just make more sense to rotate in a different direction here, uh, Gun. Yeah, with five builds, you get caught out, and then the AR spray comes through, takes you down real quick. He knows he has the HP advantage, but it looks like Dawn wants to come clean this up. He's heard the engagements. He goes up. And if this doesn't scare away Igna, I don't think anything will. Seeing another player walk on through, he does see that happening. And finally, the disengage comes out, not wanting to get involved in those crazy third-party fights. Yeah, honestly, I don't blame him, right? Like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to fight at a major POI like this just on the edge of zone because you already know people are going to be either rotating in this direction or they're already here, like we see. There are four players... Uh, in this region of Lazy Lake. And so as soon as some fighting ensues, you hear some shots, you already know some of these players are just going to close in on each other, and it's just not going to be good for anybody involved. And it's nice to see this gun. There are a lot of notable names that I didn't notice when we were looking at the player list before. We talk about Dawn. We talk about TNA's Asian Jeff. A lot of players uh, out here today showing that they are or they have what it takes here to be one of the play versus champions. Yeah, no doubt. And I think one of the scariest parts, if you're just a, a regular old competitive player, maybe don't have the caliber or the achievements that some of these other guys have, it could be slightly intimidating. But at this point, you have to know you both made it to the same point. You're, you're on the same playing field and that has to give you confidence or at least it would give me confidence knowing I'm able to compete up against some of the best and we get to see some other players take some action here. The bridge is going to be quite contested. We know the metal is huge. Everyone wants those hard materials. So all of these bridges are typically farmed out. But so many people walk on past here and try and grab that metal. Metavent holding down this spot, not wanting to give up any of that position. Smart play here from Metavent. Knowing that he has a good section of zone, positioned well, can 
truly identify everything going on around him through this cone, it, it doesn't make sense for him to kind of take any kind of engagements outside of what is necessary. And I think there's not going to be a lot going on, especially since Cole is doing the same thing next to him here on the bridge. Uh, hopefully he doesn't have a lot of players rotating in this direction, but you already know there's a good chance that something's going to happen here in the near future. Now looking at the inventory though for him, he's set to go with those peppers. Now we see Gopher here right in the middle of the map. A lot of what happens in solos is what we see with Gopher. Just the bush chilling, someone sitting in a roof or behind a door in a <laughs> building. Those are been, Those have become more common as these solo seasons have come and developed. Not everyone simply wants to be sitting in a box, letting everyone know where you're at. Sometimes the better play is to gain that surprise advantage. Get the first shots off because you don't have to be the best mechanical player if you're hitting someone for 120, 180 right off the rip when you're surprising them. And I mean, if I'm a player getting surprised walking into a box or a building, I'm gonna be shambles already. And that will be a huge advantage as we see Cole getting an engagement here. As it looks like Timbers is trying to jump on Cole, likely, likely because of possible storm surge, which is gonna come up here in the seventh or third zone. Yeah, it's definitely gonna play a factor here. Now, will it last? That's the real question. We've watched tons of games get affected by Storm Surge here, and in a solo uh, solo game mode, there definitely could be uh, some some issues here, just like for Timbers. Timbers now actually just above the damage threshold as it quickly changes there. Uh, fortunate for him, but four players still need to go down for this to get deactivated. Yeah, and for you guys that don't know what Storm Surge, here is your tournament plug of Storm Surge to understand what's going on. It is a mechanic that ticks for 25 damage to the players that have the least amount of damage dealt in the lobby. So every time that you take a shot, every time that you hit a player, that damage is racked up. And then the players that have the least of it in the lobby, when we get to these certain thresholds. So it's going to be 70 players we're more, if there's more than 70 players in third zone, Storm Surge will take effect. If there's more than 50 players in fifth zone, Storm Surge will take effect. And same for seventh and 30 players. And it will continue to go until we get below those thresholds. We see the damage threshold on the right side, right above the minimap. That's how you keep track of it. Then in the top left corner, you can see the number of players. In the bottom right corner, you see two out of nine. Those are the storm numbers or the storm that we're currently in that's how you keep track of everything that's going on so if you're just wondering we're going to talk about storm surge if it becomes an issue that is exactly what you should be looking out for and trying to understand absolutely and when you have a top 100 situation like this because it folks at home if you don't know or if you missed it earlier this is the top 100 solo players that have competed over the span of weeks to get to this point. And so now it's all about them showing what they have as Sigma looks around to take some shots in the distance. Looking at the zone though, uh, it probably makes more sense for, for Sigma here to rotate. You, you need to be very careful and cautious of everything going on in an early rotation will get you that position you need to be successful, especially because he was only 22 damage above the threshold. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like Seabear is going to be one dealing with some Storm Surge. And he might be the only player dealing with it. Might be looking to heal this off. Never the play. I mean, if you ask me, Panda, <laughs> healing off Storm Surge is rarely going to work. Maybe as a trio, you could do it if you have tons of heals. But as a solo, you're just going to waste all that's in your inventory. And it looks like there's not much going on around the map. He's going to be the only one dealing with this issue. And Seabear's just going to tick away, hopefully getting shots here. Jumping in the box, looking for those shots. Does hit a tag. Ooh. Is now going to look to get out of this box. Oh, that player hits some big shots back. And they trade. Seabear goes down to 87 HP. And now this other player has been weakened as well. He needs to be careful. He does not have the shield in the inventory anymore to, to withstand any more blows, especially considering he's still less than 100 health. He needs to make sure that if Seabear is going to take this engagement, he needs to take it smart. He can't overextend. He has to take shots from a distance as Aglor just tries to continue to apply pressure. I got to say this, right? Aglor has the inventory to make some big plays here. 
He's got the, the ammo. He's got the weapons he needs, and he has the additional shield. Now it's just about taking full advantage of this other player who is struggling. And it looks like both these guys are content with just hanging out here. Neither one necessarily wants to go for the full engagement, as we do see Aguilar actually going to dive in. He wants all this, and he continues to put the AR spray pressuring Seabear. These are going to be the precious materials that are wasted. Both players get hit up. Seabear is going to pop his last flopper. Aglor waiting. Now trying to get this big pot off. He does have the HP advantage, but still not enough to withstand a full pump shotgun shot. Going out, disengaging, putting himself above a layer, and going to pop the big pot. Yeah, this is a dangerous layer to be on here for Aglor. Uh, if you are not careful, you'll end up getting singled out by the other players that are on the edge of zone here. Because that's the last thing you want to have to deal with. They know that there's fighting already happening in this section of the zone. Plus, you take a, a layer that's just higher than where you were at before. It's easily how you get targeted. Fortunately for him, though, he's going to be able to get away from it all. Rotate, and it looks like a nice little refresh here on Brick. Man, that was... Uh... An expensive engagement for both of those players. Neither one walking away with a nice elimination and the extra loot that you'd be hoping for. So it took some time. It hurts, but you're still alive. At, le at least you get a walk away from it. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get a walk away from those engagements. They will both live to farm some placement points here as we are now in the one point per placement threshold. Wait till we get down to about 20. Then you start getting two points per, and we get to see where this fourth zone pulls. Now, it's going to go right over the middle of the map almost as we tune in with Patriot. Yeah, Patriot actually set up for success. Look at this. A, a, a quick refresh here uh, from the water. It gives him an epic assault rifle, a, a, a fresh harpoon a gun. I mean, this is what you want to see here. I'm, I'm impressed. That's a nice little refresh to pick up, especially considering the mat refresh there which is going to make a huge impact here as a solo player in the later rounds and he's going to use that spicy fish to get him moving through i like that play he's got a nice full inventory doesn't necessarily want to do it walks by a bush there's a player in there he does get tagged Ooh. up a couple of times but keeps on moving the rotate continues through I wouldn't stop for too long here. Pop a mini, keep moving, my guy. We got to get into zone. The longer you take, the harder these rotates become, and he knows that. He already used that spicy fish to get himself through here. He's moving on past and should be in a nice position here in fourth zone as he continues to move up and up. Potentially could grab high ground if he wants it, but it doesn't look like he wants to play that way. Yeah, and like we mentioned before, if you if you take a layer that's a little bit too high or it's too obvious that you're there, you could end up getting targeted by other players around. Fortunately for him, though, that is the perfect layer to be on. There's already existing builds just next to where he's at. He's able to build out in a box independently from everybody else, and uh, it's going to work in his favor. Now, though, Storm Surge becoming active once again as Al just tries to get some additional tags in. Only 18 damage above the threshold is not going to hold you over here in this game. No way, as we're tuning in with one of those players that are going to be below. So we got 35 seconds. It doesn't take into effect until this fifth zone pops up or fourth zone closes. Whatever way you want to say it, it's two sides of the coin. And now <laughs> Pluro needs to be looking for some potential shots here. He's only looking at a single player, not giving himself many opportunities. And I'm not a fan of waiting until Storm Surge starts taking it into effect. You gotta be proactive in this stuff. And we'll see if he's going to get aggressive and jump in a box. Pretty much just seems content to wait this out. He's got eight minis to hold, hold it off for a little bit. But not always going to be the plan as we see Fit Zone does pop. Everyone is on this left side or the west side of Colossal Crops. And here comes the plays to rotate or make Storm Surge no longer a factor for you. Yeah, I, I got to say this. If you're still concerned about Storm Surge and you're trying to heal it out, we saw how, how difficult it is before and how taxing it is on your inventory. And Cluro is just trying to do the same thing. Now only 16 damage below. I think it, it would, in my opinion, it would make more sense to just try to take a shot at somebody. You get one shot off and you are no longer worrying about Storm Surge. 
but now you see still struggling to get those minis off looking at this view though you see still so much action going on as players begin to rotate so many people still out of zone this is going to be an interesting rotation to say the least blue row taking advantage of a, a, a bit of an early rotation here uh, just trying to get around to the side and it does look like he may be able to get away pretty free and that corn gives him a nice little rotate gave the lobby a good bit of a rotate and allowed them to just to move through without getting seen. Solid Tate here by Cluro, able to use very little materials as we tune into another player who seemed to have paid for this rotate, having to get knocked down all the way to about 20 HP. Able to use that medkit, had one more mini remaining, and now we see the players struggling. Everyone on this backside, because of how packed it was on the opposite side of zone, had to deal with this. Beast Ooh. picks up an elimination there with that infantry. You wanted to see it, Panda. There's one of them. Oh, I definitely wanted to see it. The infantry rifle, hands down, my favorite weapon to ever hit Fortnite. Other than maybe the pump shotgun. I can't buy there. But the infantry rifle, so much skill it takes to really hit those shots and, and put the damage in. But when you have great aim, it rewards it. And now, though, looking at ethical, uh, definitely struggling a little bit. Oh, my gosh, what a turn of events here as Andy goes down here to ethical and ethical immediately then gets eliminated by none other than Asian Jeff. The TNA ops, <laughs> my man, this guy uh, definitely trying to uh, put in some work here throughout today's games. And now we tune in with Sigma, and this lobby's quickly going down. We're all the, way, all the way down to 37 players, just above 50 from that last zone. Storm Surge once again playing into a factor, but Curex taking down Beast. Duff getting a Lana Road, and as well as Scrapper taking down Kazi. So Elims keep rolling through. You gotta chain together these Elims, these refreshes, but it looks like Duff's gonna go down to Storm there. That's tough. Now we're looking at Sankoko. Rotating on through. Looks like he's moving pretty quickly. I want to say he's on a pepper. and Yeah, no, he's definitely on a pepper. And that's why he's able to move so quickly. Checking on what's going on behind him. Looking for potential refreshes. He needs those. Not a ton of power behind him in that tactical shotgun. But nonetheless, in a good position in this zone. Agreed. He definitely doesn't have the ability to get some significant tags off with attack in that position. But regardless, he is still going to try to play his layer effectively as we switch over. You see, man, he gets an elimination there on Seabear. Seabear, one of those players we watched early on have success at his drop spot, but ultimately goes down here to San Coco. Now just trying to rotate here as high ground begins to punish him relentlessly, and he goes down immediately to the low ground player. See, that's what it's all about. You see the different angles coming in as Blue Cam just dominating from a high ground position here in game number one. He's gonna run out of materials, but that doesn't matter for now. He'll worry about that when he runs out. Continuing to rain down fire from up above and Flu Cam able to place in DreamHack Finals yesterday on NAE. So congratulations to him. Now tuning it up in solos as opposed to duos. So we're checking what's going on in the low ground with Curix. He's got a good bit of materials to own this low ground position, and he's cleaned it up. Nobody is down below. He finds a player up above, not able to connect, almost drops this player down, and he continues to look for the drop. It doesn't happen, and now his focus changes over to Patek, who's right on his opposite wall. Likely with very little materials, just takes the Bloom fight. Kyrick's not connecting on that one, and that's Patek that's the winner of that engagement, but it's not over yet, as Kyrick's is running out of those materials and flu cam up on the height, which is not very high. Actually, no, Sigma's taking it from them both yeah what a change of events here for flu cam going from a high ground position to no material whatsoever he is going to try to play the heal game here a little bit as curex actually right next door so it's sigma versus asian jeff on the low ground and now both of them just shooting back in the storm trying to get the elimination there it actually does go to flu cam now you see high ground versus low ground sigma versus jeff who will come out on top Jeff goes for the drop, Flucam goes down, he hits the shot there. That's gonna crack the shield, he almost connects with another one. He's looking to finish this up. One more shot with that pump shot, he'll take home the first game. He's going for the big pot, both players wanna heal. He does find player Sigma looking like he has no Ooh. maps and he takes game one. Asian Jeff, the big win with 11 eliminations in game one. What a pop off. What a pop off indeed. See, that is the game you need uh, if you want to come out on top in a championship 
like this asian jeff putting up those eliminations now, listen now maybe i'm a little bit more concerned about that 20 elimination cap i think it definitely could play an effect here gun <laughs> oh he only got about halfway there i mean he's still got nine more we'll see if he gets more aggressive as the day goes on but a solid first match we saw a lot of plays happening here this quick little replay showing you guys what's going on flu cam able to pick that up get himself a third place scooping up those placement points and asian jeff just cleaning this one up sigma dives in the storm not able to fully grab any plays there to grab the win but man what a yeah. first game what a first game indeed. And that is the action we are providing for you all at home today. Because if you don't know, this is the Play versus Spring 21 High School Championship featuring Fortnite solos. And uh, we're gonna bring you more action right after this break. Till I broke the rules 
We are back to the play versus spring 21 high school championship featuring Fortnite. My name is Panda and alongside me again today is somebody's gun and we just got done with game number one. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Gun. What a game number one to say the least. And it's no surprise to see Asian Jeff up on top in first place. 141 points, able to pick up the victory royale, 11 eliminations. And we're now looking below that, Sigma, who came in second, obviously falling behind Flucam, who didn't have the same number of eliminations. So Flucam sitting in second place. We have Take, Curix, Lana, Scrapper, Joe, and Prudis there cleaning out our top nine. Then Sablazo. Definitely a, a Colazzo fanboy down there in 10th. I mean, it's it's nice to see these guys having a solid first match. Absolutely. And as we continue on the leaderboards, you see 80 points puts you in 11th place versus someone like Asian Jeff there on the top. So Heckler's there. You see Kobe loves GG. Hey, I think we all love Kobe and GG here. Uh, Blastor there in 13th. You see Cooper in 14th. So many great players that we got to watch compete here in game number one right there in the top 20. And the boy Crazy GG's hanging out down there in 20th place. I'm <laughs> personally going to be rooting for him. I know we shouldn't have some bias, but you know, you got your favorites and such. So uh, of course. We, we don't control anything. We're just simply hanging out watching. Solid first match, pretty middle of the map. So not any of those crazy elevation changes, no crazy water zones. I'm sure we're in for that. We'll see some crazy zones here in the next five games, Panda. I imagine that we will. I, I couldn't I couldn't see a future where we don't get a crazy zone taking us up hills and through that water. I'm excited regardless, right? T tons of great stuff going on so far in game number one. If And if we can replicate that in the rest of these games, I got to say this is going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, well, we'll have to see who can continue to dominate right because it's, it's not simply just a one match one game performance yes i mean a big win like jeff got in that first match probably gonna put him in the top 50 regardless of what happens in the five yeah. but these guys are competitors they want it all it's not just one game they want to take home that prize and give themselves i guess the qualification towards the play versus cup later on and show show your uh fellow colleagues or classmates in high school like hey i'm the best what's up <laughs> yeah what's up right you're showing off I, I gotta say this is a pretty cool way to do it and, and and play versus stepping up to the plate and putting on productions like this all throughout the u.s uh and connecting with schools in the way they do it's really cool to see this especially as it becomes more and more integrated into fortnite as a whole you see these these play versus events starting to pop up there for for people uh right there on the compete tab so it's exciting to see how we continue to get players involved at this capacity and we just had the collegiate championship last week we saw a lot of plays happen posick and his trio as well as posick winning the solos so he had a great day but like you're saying 
I don't know that right now we can appreciate the gravity of these situations and these tournaments, but say yeah. Fortnite continues for like 10, 15 more years and you were the one that won like the second ever championship <laughs> for play versus in high school. Like how cool would that be? Yeah, it definitely would be, right? It, it sets yourself up for success for that future as we dive in to game number two. And it looks like we're going to get some Andy action. We did see a little bit of him in game number one, but unfortunately, it looked like falling down throughout the mid games. Yeah, unfortunately, going down. And we see Peace Police picking up Lambs on early on. And we're here with Nug at the Steamy Stacks. Look like we got three other or three total players here. Is 8, 9, and X is getting taken out as well. Nug just grabbing what, what he can from the stacks, putting himself in a solid spot. Quick little leap path as it looks like both players have claimed the other main buildings. Not sure exactly what you want to do this. I, I'm not a solo player myself. Um, I like to <laughs> be carried either. by other people, so I, I my claim to fame is that instead of playing by myself here, Panda. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm not a huge solo player. I think it's super taxing, right? But it just speaks to the quality of player that we see competing today because they're able to handle the stress and, and, and overall pressure that comes with a solo game. Oh, yeah. It's very mentally taxing to continue to play this game. And then not only that, but there's so much you have to concern yourself with. Your material count, your ammo, as we see Cluro getting an engagement there. And that's going to be taken out by Sablazo. He's able to win that engagement off the spawn. But going back to my point, we have your loadout management, your material management, your ammo economy. And just that is within yourself, not to mention all of the other factors within a Fortnite game outside of your own control. Man, I, uh, oh, looks like Goldini's doing some challenges here. Nice, but. Hey, you gotta get them done, man. The, the end <laughs> of the season's approaching here. Challenge grinding in a tournament, you gotta respect that. <laughs> you have to respect it for sure. Uh, now though, going to, to our game one winner. You see Jeff here just uh, preparing himself for a good game, already in zone. You focusing on the material aspect of the game and uh, it does look like he's gonna be able to walk away with at least something to work with here in the mid game. And he's got that bow. A bow is a game ender. The primal one doesn't do as much damage, but that mechanical bow as we see Vanish Storms getting tagged up big here. He's got the heals. He was able to trade some damage back. Can't exactly see who that is. That's Q under him. So both players going to go for a heal. He has the gas can advantage, so that's huge. Not able to connect on it right away, and it looks like Q is going to sneak out, able to get that big pot off, and this engagement continues. Q looking for this trying to find an opportunity to get up higher storms holding the high ground playing this off but we do see players in the background this has got to finish quickly otherwise the third party is going to come in and win this fight regardless of what goes on right here yeah you said it best you need to make sure that this fight is a quick one if you are not efficient with this engagement you're ultimately going to get focused by other players as you see in the distance there in bony burbs you know they hear what's going on and with storms being so weak and going down there you already know that these other players are in the water. They smell the blood in the water. They fear it, and they are going to come after those players. We get to see some more water action here as we're in the pool. It's, it's been cleaned out. Now it's all dry. And I suppose I think he's just flexing that uh, gold pump shotgun on this other pet player. Not even really getting shots with that first one. Now running low on materials there are players in the nearby area taking shots on this as well so i spoke and colon have to be careful i spoke looks to disengage but doesn't have the materials too so he's gonna have to all in on this fight colon in a similar spot as far as the loadout goes doesn't have that power weapon and finds a shot that's big that's a crack there but no the gold pump shotgun proves to be too much I, I gotta say this, right? When you have that legendary pump shotgun in the inventory, you feel that extra layer of confidence, right, Gun? I mean, when you have that, you know that you're gonna go into an engagement in a way better position than the other player. Now, though, you see the outside of zone, it uh, looks like hostile, just trying to rotate around, get some fishing done, potentially get some loot in. And uh, this has been a, a pretty frequent drop area for solo players, wouldn't you say? 
Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of going over and snagging all this loot outside of Dirty Docks. Um, now we're tuning in to Q, who is once again in an engagement after cleaning up one. It's Andy GG's over nearby, and Q takes some shots. Just uh, moving on out of here as we see Zone pulling pretty much south today. We're going towards the southern end, at least in game two, after going straight up the middle in game one. So many little engagements happening all over the map, Panda. Absolutely. Caillou, another uh, established name in the community uh, for just playing very, very well in these tournaments. So, ooh, as I say that, of course, he immediately gets beamed here by another player. Now just trying to take this engagement as patiently as possible. It does look like he's going to be able to heal up and the other player is just going to completely disengage. Again, talking about the peppers, that is a huge advantage to have. You get some storm surge tags in real quick and then you can just dip out. Yes. Corn dog man, grabbing those tags, getting on out of there. Says, all right, thank you. We don't need to fight this. I just needed to get my damage in. I'm, I'm moving on out. And he's able to grab this big pot, which is going to be huge. Get himself up to 200 HP. No longer one pumpable by that perfect purple pump shotgun. And now he looks appears to be chilling as he's taking shots. Looks like Joe's getting tagged up from multiple Ooh. players there. That's unfortunate for him. And I think Core Dog wants to keep on moving. You want to get south in these zones. You don't want to get stuck right on the north side of these mountains that we're about to see Corn Dog go up. You want to stay south of them or claim one of those mountains. Yeah, I got to agree with you there. If you're not claiming one of those hills, you're definitely putting yourself in a position you don't want to be in. Now, though, actually switching to a different angle here on the map, Slurpee Swamp. And it looks like we got these two players just trying to, to fight it out here uh, in the middle of this. But you look around and there's players all around them and if they're not careful they're going to end up getting tagged up pretty quickly and i think produce knows that and that's why you see him completely disengaging from what was going on yeah and he's he's already got all, all of the means to have a good game here can top off his materials on the way out grab some tags on players but doesn't matter what he's doing he's chilling now kauzy right on top of crunch going for some shots trying to find this potential tags and it looks like this engagement lasted a long time. We're catching the tail end of it. Neither player able to take a huge advantage here. And now Kauzy just waiting for his potential shots. Not looking for too much. And we see Sailor Trent coming up on the other side of this mountain. Yeah, see, this is, this is a problem, right? If you spend too much time or too much material on an engagement so early in the game, you you ultimately mess up the rest of your game right you see joe here actually almost getting tagged up there if he's not careful he needs to make sure he's paying attention to those walls as caillou just begins to apply pressure here and joe just tries to get healthy that's right we get to see joe hitting those shots and caillou he's been down bad a couple of times already but now continuing to stay alive Looks like Joe is going to have the HP advantage, and I, I would guess Kai moves on out of here if he got what he needed from that engagement. Does hear a third party come through, and that's more shots that Kai is dealing with. If I'm Joe, I'm chilling, putting my feet up, relate, relaxing, I'm not really doing much right now. You're not in a position where you have to make a play yet, but Zone yeah. is going to force that engagement soon, or at least a rotate. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. It is going to force that. So you you guys need to, to hurry up and just begin the rotation. You, you cut off different angles, go different directions. Uh, no peppers here in the inventory for Caillou, so you're not going to see a rotation quickly. Uh, but it does look like he's actually about to approach another player. Switching over, though, you see Lacey just trying to stay alive here in Slurpee Swamp with all these other players pushing in her direction. And Lacey using all of those barrels here able to get some extra hp hits the shot nice little tag not too significant but at least like uh let you know she's here able to get some damage out and choosing that tactical shotgun over the makeshift likely doesn't have those mechanical parts to get up to that blue pump shotgun so gonna stick with this and full hp here you like to see that you definitely do love to see it being able to to get healthy in Slurpee Swamp is definitely the biggest advantage of the POI itself. 
and, and we, we look at like power POIs and this definitely has to be considered one of them, right? You, you see the advantages that the POI has, the healing, the, the sheer amount of metal that you can collect. I mean, this is where you want to drop if you're picking a spot, as especially as a solo player. But you have to remember when you're picking a drop spot like that, there's a good chance you're going to find other players. And that's what we saw Lacey have to deal with. Now, though, Caillou just trying to rotate here through the middle uh, with Eden just on the other side. So Caillou just trying to decide what the best plan of attack here is going to be for him. And if he's not careful, he could uh, end up being in a tough mid ground or mid game situation. Oh boy, this is a tough tape for, for the boys. Everyone here needs to keep on moving. You like taking shots, but you don't necessarily like getting stuck well outside a zone. We get to see where it's at. It was all the way down and slurping. Every time you tag a player like this, they're going to stop and look back, heal, and then try and shoot you back. So it's not in your favor to take shots on players here when you are this far from zone. It's just going to hinder your rotate even more. We see Eden gets tagged up once again on his own rotate. Kai tagged up multiple times on this rotate. Everyone, let's let's be smart. Let, let's stop. Let, let's get in the river and let's keep on moving. As it uh, looks like Eden actually decides, not nah, somebody's gone. I'm not listening to you. I'm taking shots. He's right there. <laughs> Yeah, see, that that's the, the, the tough thing about a situation in solos specifically. You, you see all these players, they're evenly spread out. It's not like they're clumped together in the same box, right? So it's so much tougher to rotate in a situation like this as Pixify, uh, it looks like, is going to have to take this fight that it looked like he was actually avoiding here for the most part. So if he's not careful, he's going to get hit up and stuck in a situation uh, that he doesn't want to be in, considering that there is a player on either side of Pixify's builds. Yeah, and we have more people up at this point than we did last, last game. So the Storm Surge going to be an even bigger factor here in game two. Players were a little gr aggressive in game one. Now Pixify going to have to make a play or find somebody on this rotate. In this building, it's going to be hard to get any potential storm surge tags, so he's going to have to find somebody nearby. There is a player right below him in Clovey, but it looks like Pixify not going to be able to find him right now. Yeah, see, that's tough. In Slurpee Swamp, it's so difficult to completely identify everywhere that a player is because there's going to be so many players around you. Fortunately for Pixify, zone is going to be in his favor. However, he is still below that damage threshold. He's going to be able to use these mushrooms that he's boxed in. He's going to be able to use that canister. But is that going to be enough to hold him off from this damage threshold? Because he is still below as of now. Yeah, this is going to be tough for him. Not a huge fan. If it continues to happen, you'll continue to hear me say it. Not a huge fan of healing off the Storm Surge. It's just not going to be the most effective thing to do. As we see some players here fighting for Surge. And that's look looking like Patek is on the worst end of this. So he's dealing with multiple players trying to get some shots on him. We see all of those players out in the distance that he's looking at trying to get their tags as well. And the zone's going to pull basically right over Slurpee Swamp. So... If the players in there are able to survive Storm Surge, they'll be in a great position. And another battle going on here with Jacko and Gopher right next to one another. It looks like Gopher's going with the shotgun only loadout. What do you think about that, Panda? <laughs> That's an interesting loadout, but with the tactical shotgun being back in the game, it is viable because that fire rate is higher than your standard shotgun. The damage output is viable. I mean, you can take walls with it, so you can use it for utility. You can use it for engagements. I mean, if you're going to only use one weapon, I'm going to say that the legendary variant of that tactile shotgun is going to be the wave. And of course, as we say that, finds an assault rifle and finally puts one back in his inventory. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> hey, we wanted, you know what? We wanted to see shotgun only action here in this game, but it does not look like we're going to get it as a uh, console bot is just trying to stay alive here, stuck in storm. These other players just continue to apply pressure. You see Curix there. We watched him closely in game number one. Now just trying to hold console bot out in zone. He really needs to continue to rotate. He cannot afford to take a ton of damage here. He does have the fish in the inventory. However, you know you want to save those for the later parts of this game or else you're just not going to have what it takes to survive. 
Yeah, and Kyrx is being quite a problem for him on this rotate. Console bot dealing with some issues. There should be some barrels that he can grab along the way as he does go for one. Looking for some more. I don't think there's that many left. We saw Lacey was stealing them all earlier in the game, but here's Consulbot able to find a few. So a nice little sneak play, grabbing these on the edge of Storm. Curix was not, no longer able to hold him there. Like to see that. You want to see everyone continue to get in the zone. You can fight there. Uh, once we get in the zone, we can fight there. As we see third zone closing, we're going to see who has the great positioning here. If it pulls up towards the Swamp Building, that guy's in an awesome spot. And no, we're going over to the east. Basically a flat area with some slurp barrels, a little bit of swamp action going on. And here's Curix holding that player in with six peppers. He can he can literally pepper every single zone from here on out. Yeah, see, that's crazy to me, right? It is the amount of peppers that you can stack. I've literally walked away from Caddy Corner with 10 plus peppers in the inventory. And, and honestly, it's so nice to have. You see Curex here just confidently looking around and trying to just gra get a grasp of what's going on here. He is going to need to rotate here soon, but he does have the buildings here in Slurpee to kind of shade him a little bit so he doesn't have to use as many material on the rotation. Uh, but he still does need to be careful, especially when rotating with all these players behind him because he could easily become the target of some uh, shots coming off there in the distance. And he just zooms on past. Going to take a couple of shots here, but nothing that should absolutely stop him. Does get into zone. And now he will be the one to punish players on the rotate. Hopefully not to get buried too much. It's really looking like, I mean, there is so many players currently in Slur Slurpee Swamp that are just going to pile up on this left side of zone. And then there's going to be no one hanging out in the middle right now with a few players on this south side as well that need to make this rotation in. So we tune in with Star with a beautiful loadout. This is almost ideal if I'm this player with the Stinkfish, the Weaponry, and the Minis and Harpoon. I don't know that I can make a better loadout than this. Yeah, I, I definitely am going to have to agree with you. You, you see, I, I, let's talk about these fish for a second. These Stinkfish have, have been, in my opinion underrated in comparison to the bow right i get that the bow has a ton more ammo don't get me wrong but with those fish it hits a broader range when players are boxed so if you're using that effectively you're getting some significant tags off especially when storm surge is a factor and talking about storm surge here today looking at gopher gopher is only eight damage above the storm surge threshold so he's gonna have to make something happen just like big mo here is 46 below so the shots are gonna need to come out he needs to focus on getting any kind of tags that he can and we see the shots coming off in every direction of the game Oh, Eureka is in box to box here. No, he goes down. They were getting lobby focused. Likely that other player that was Nasa Rooney taking him down is going to fall to the lobby spray as well. And the engagements start happening right now. Everyone wants their damage. Looks like Big Mo was able to go up and now Nug is one of the players down below the surge. He's going to get in the box, finds a player, not able to connect on that one. And now they're wall to wall and Nug Ooh. goes down to Surge. And that's the first time in today's games that we've seen Surge not only play a factor in the game, but completely eliminate a player. So uh, unfortunate him, but fortunate for Star here as he's going to get a, a refresh that he definitely needed. You see the, the uh, material in the inventory was very, very low there for him so if he's not careful it doesn't get to farm in here just like produce uh he could be in a, in a compromising position especially considering this is only zone number five and eden's in another engagement here i mean regardless the storm surge or the rotate so many engagements are happening here and the, the players just begin to pile up as they look for their rotations look like big mo was able to get an elimination in the feed down goes crazy ggs to crunch and andy ggs able to pick one up there on the Savic, and it looks like Brutus wants to play the high ground position a little far away so this is a dangerous rotate oh Ooh. that's all right that's what i was gonna say thank you for that <laughs> i mean listen you couldn't have asked for better timing uh not for Brutus, of course but for us when we're talking about the situation i, I gotta say like uh like gun mentioned you have to be careful especially when you're going for high ground at, at this point in time you were low Brutus was low on health didn't have what it took to survive and that's why he went down so quickly there but now it's up to Medivant 
the next player trying to go for high ground here uh but starting to get focused he only has a little bit in the inventory as far as heals go so he needs to be very very careful as his material begins to dwindle yeah and he's gonna be giving up this position to go for the med kit he still could own the high ground he's the only one on this side of zone and could quickly take this positioning i don't think he realizes he's yet yet as he's looking back trying to find some potential free loot to grab with that harpoon we know that'll sustain you really well and the lobby is quickly going down as hide and seek picks up curex gonna grab the leftover loot doesn't see the minis another player jumps in his face hide and seek just looking to get out he's going down mm. the storm there that is tough dash rooney now tuning in with him and that was cloud C taking down hide and seek now dash looking to make a med kit play here let's see if it pays off yeah i mean look you're gonna have to take the med kit you're gonna be outside of storm and, and honestly between you and me how far zone is i don't know if the med kit was the play but no matter what dash is gonna try to make something happen here with it it does look like there's gonna be a player there he's gonna oh i thought he was gonna make it out but no not gonna be able to make it out as storm takes him down now though switching over to igna igna just looking to continue this fight on he's got one elimination on the board looking to put another one in there it is he puts another elimination on the board against peace police now just trying to rotate through all these other builds you see the pepper in full effect effect keeping him alive in that situation that is huge but now no material left here for igna shotguns out and that's that's the play you have the harpoon to jump into boxes here zone's gonna continue to push them he does get that med kit off he gets another elimination here and igna is popping off grabbing those siphon materials and then moving on past gonna tank some storm a little bit finds a little bit more of a refresh but not the materials that he needs another elim has to come through go for picking one up someone jumps right on him he goes down but right before he takes the storm he's able to pick up an elim someone right in his face Ooh. and no igna goes down there to go for and it's up to jacko against oh that's asian jeff is alive once again oh man are we gonna see a back-to-back -back victory here for asian jeff with three players remaining this very well could be the case now you look metavan on the high ground just looking to take shots no more material left in the inventory now just going up against gopher here but little does he know asian jeff just off in the distance looking to take some shots as well if metavan's not careful he could get edited down there really quickly and ultimately go down he does get the elimination and there it is a back-to-back -back victory royale for asian jeff gopher doing all the work just jumping right on to meta van and those two battling it out asian jeff just wow. chilling he's up on his perch he's like all right i'll take my ar shots you guys thank you back to back that's two that is back to back action there as we get some replays here from game number two you see just tags coming off from every direction and and i gotta say this right people focus a lot on the on the um the shotgun that they choose for their game but quickly you see the impact that an assault rifle can have here as these players just utilize it effectively there in the distance to get those tags bam you see igna popping off in a top four situation there uh, not being able to, to make something else happen with it but now switch over to asian jeff you see asian jeff this was the final moments here folks he understood what was taking place he got the shots off and ultimately got the victory royale man you can't ask for an easier win for asian jeff at least the <laughs> final moments i'm not gonna say the entire thing was easy but when two players are storm fighting and all you have to do is sit there and spray i mean that is just as easy as it gets and he's got to be right on top of our leaderboards he's gotta be but before we get to those leaderboards we're gonna be bringing you all this action throughout today but quickly we're gonna go to a break and then dive into game number three To dream, believe in strength. Now I'm the only one, only one. I was an ordinary boy until I broke the rules, my life. 
Superhero To the edge, lying and go away. Been testing myself by the worst. I've been pushing my mind to the most. I've been loving the people around me. But so paranoid, so paranoid.
We are back to the Play versus Spring 2020 or 21 High School Championship Challenge featuring Fortnite here. Uh, Panda Gun here bringing you all the action. And I heard we already have those leaderboards ready. Oh, let's take a peek, see what we got. Be really surprised. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we got Jeff up on top, and it looks like Igna is in second place. Metavant rounding up our top three. And what else do we got here on the leaderboards? Who's standing out to you, Panda? Okay, so obviously we have to give props to Jeff and, and the consistency. First place, back-to-back -back victory royales, 11 elimination in game number one, and I believe five eliminations in game number two. So really solid performances there for Jeff. But looking at the leaderboard, we actually saw Lana lower after game number one. So obviously Lana having a great game there and climbing up the leaderboard just a little bit. You see Metavant in third, uh, easily climbing up here. It looks like struggled with placement uh, the first game, but ultimately being able to turn that around and have a big game number two and change it up there. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now we'll get to see what the consistency is like, right? We see that average placement on the right side and everyone besides our top two players is up in double digits. And that just means I had one really good game. I had one not so good game. And <laughs> now it comes down to, all right, how consistent are you gonna be over the back half of this game? These are the top 20. Now we get to see Beast, Patek, Flute Cam, Sablazo, Consolebot, all these guys having a good start exactly where you want to be i mean if i'm trying to get into that top 50 for the play versus cup later on this year that's where i want to be top 20 to start off you can't really ask for more than that especially with what jeff's doing yeah i mean jeff just consistency is key in situations and formats like this and jeff has shown why he can be consistent and and why you should be consistent because look back-to-back -back victory royales that is the ultimate placement setup, right? You see him over 200 points. The only player as of right now over 200 points. Let's see if we can, he can keep up that consistency. Otherwise, I still think that first place spot is up for grabs. Yeah, it looked like Igno was not far behind him. Uh, only about 60 points. So it is possible, you know, if Jeff stumbles, fumbles, falls off the rip in one of these games here, they can make a quick stag for that first place game but again it's going to come down to these next few matches deciding the top of the leaderboard and who's going to be able to actually make a difference not many players were able to get consistent single digit placements only two in fact so that is yeah. going to be difficult when those two guys are playing so well it is it is definitely going to be difficult but nevertheless it, there's still so many opportunities as we have six games still, or six games in total, and uh, quite a few more games still to play. Remember, we're going into game number three as of right now here in the championship, and there's still so much that can happen. It is Fortnite, folks, so anything goes from this point on. Anything goes is right. And if you guys are sitting there, you're a parent, you're a student, you're wondering, you know, how do I get my son or daughter or myself involved in this? Go check out Play VS. They have some awesome tools and information for you guys. Whether you're a high school or collegiate student, go check it out. And I think we're ready. The battle bus is going off. Game three is coming on right now. Game three underway. And you see looking back noel diving down here over into it looks like the meadows now i gotta say this i have a lot of friends that love misty meadows john what are you thinking of misty this season i like it especially with a, a couple of those uh spawns for the non boxes that's what you're looking for the peppers are key you gotta go strong side though right we see noel actually getting those peppers right off the rip and when I talk about strong side, the side that Noel is on is the strong side. The other side, a little bit less loot. So you got to take the big option. You know, don't get alpha by another player. Take your strong side, especially with the non boxes on that one. And yeah. we see two players on the strong side, one on the weak side. Where do you like to land at Misty Panda? Hmm. Okay. As far as Misty goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. You know, you say the strong side, and I got to agree with you as far as the strong side goes. 
but ultimately when i land it all depends on the bus i have no side that i'm more favorable of it's probably for me the quickest that i can get to the ground and quickest that i can get to a weapon Ooh, red's picking up lacy here at the Ooh. the mini junk nice little place you get tons of cogs or mechanical parts Hey, what's up, Mr. Llama? When are you going swimming today? It is quite a beautiful day out, Panda. <laughs> yeah, a, a beautiful day out indeed here. Myself in New Jersey, beautiful day, and a beautiful day of Fortnite. I got to say, look at that. Like, Noel is still just trucking away, but actually rotated out of Misty. So while it did land on the strong side of Misty Meadows there, uh, ultimately he's not going to be able to get all the loot over in Misty if this player begins to rotate forward. Yeah, and there is the one bunker chest up on the other side of the river. When I land Misty, or when I have been landing Misty this season, I basically just prioritize that bunker chest and then go bully Disco because you know you're going to outloot them if you have that bunker chest. Interesting, I didn't see anyone land there, so that is still available as Storm's getting another early game engagement. My guy wants to get all of the sauce and all of the fights early on because this is now the second game we've seen him in these early game fights. Yeah, and Storm's well known for being able to handle these engagements early on, knowing that that he knows how to handle Weeping Woods. He, he can easily take this POI as his own. I think that's why you see the confidence level here from Storm as he just continues to take shots from the high ground and doesn't focus on healing with that med kit and hopefully he's able to sustain this fight that gray makeshift shotgun not going to be the best of them oh they trade some big tags oh. there and he goes down that's slowly picking up that elimination and storms man going back to the lobby hey swoley showing his excitement there after getting that elimination and i don't blame him right you see storm overextending there and ultimately that's the reason he failed he should have definitely taken that a little bit slower should have used the med kit to heal up and because he didn't he is now back in the lobby but now who's not in the lobby is jay as fix it al just tries to uh heal up right in front of him here Jay can easily Ooh. get this elimination, but no, he ends up going down as Al gets the quick shot off there on Jay. Man, he he had every advantage there in that fight. Jay, that is, to win that one. Mm. The HP, the weaponry, and he goes down. Sometimes it doesn't matter what's in your inventory. It's all about how you play it, and we got to see that right there. Now, seeing what Swoley's going on after he just won his early game engagement, it's got to make you feel good, especially with Storm Surge being a factor in the past couple of games. When you don't have to worry about that much anymore after getting these early elims, you got to yeah. feel good about yourself. Yeah, and, and thinking of, like, power POIs, Weeping Woods, uh, an excellent place to drop. You, you see him being able to farm those mechanical parts early on. That's going to give him the weapons that he wants going into the later parts of this game and ultimately just going to set him up for success. Now, though, speaking of less success, it's Solution getting tagged up here from Shryzo as the rotation begins around the Misty Meadow side. And we'll get to see if this engagement happens here. There's a couple of players in the background. Looks like Shryzo just wanted those quick shots. And it's like, all right, yeah, solution. I'm out. I'm out. We don't need to do this anymore. These guys continue moving on. And now solution might be the benefactor that's able to get some tags back, give him his own juice in these fights. Not when you're not hitting your shots, but both players need to make a rotated. As it looks like we're having a holly sweaty zone based on where we're at. Yeah, it does look like it's going to be the case here. Uh, and I'm, I'm interested. I'm for it, Gun. I think that's the zone we want to see today, uh, especially here in game number three. But switching the focus over here to Boney Burbs, there's quite a few players over there. Yeah, there are a number of players in the middle of the map. And now we're tuning back in with Caillou, who seemed to always be in one of those engagements. He was landing towards the middle of the map earlier on today and now deciding to go over to Slurpee Swamps or at least rotating on through that way. Looking like Big Mo in his sights for the shots. Ooh, Caillou missing. You got, got to hit those when you get your first shot. You have the opportunity to start off the engagement with an HP advantage. Now nothing coming through here. And Big Mo, Caillou, looks like this fight's happening. 
Yeah, Caillou is well known for being a player that loves to W key, loves to just push forward and continually apply pressure. I think that's why he does so, so well in these tournaments and he's so dominant. And that's what we see right here, right? You see him just continue to apply pressure. Now Big Mo getting shot at from several different locations on the map. He needs to be careful. He needs to focus on just staying alive as his material just dwindles down to 25. And you see the peaks, he's taking the right angles here, but not necessarily going to be on the right side of this engagement. Big Mo starts to back off and it doesn't look like Caillou wants to let him do that. We see Fluke Cam picking up an elimination in the feed and now Big Mo on the back side of this engagement. Caillou quite aggressive. It seems like every time we tune into him, he is in an engagement. Big Mo just simply gonna walk on out of there. Doesn't want to continue this fight. Interesting choice here. Neither player, seems to want to let this go or i guess caillou doesn't want to let this go and big mo does we'll get to see who wins this over is there's now five players in the nearby area yeah so now they really need to be careful they need to make sure they're not overextending and putting themselves in a position with these third party uh, opportunities here in the distance uh because caillou has struggled here in the first two games you see only 23 points on the board so far unlike caillou uh, to start to say the least but you never know you know that this game is still going on a lot of change can happen here as caillou just begins to rotate away and it looks like big mo was able to pick up an elimination on echo so it wasn't caillou that wound up in the sights of big mo but caillou still sees big mo it's like hey i heard all that going on there i i want to be a part of this and is this engagement ever going to end? Uh, I think it only ends with one of these players going down here, Panda. Yeah, I definitely think somebody's going to go down. It's just a matter of who, right? We got to figure out who's going to fall here in Slurpee Swamp as the storm just press presses on. They need to make sure they're paying attention to that too. I think a lot of players get so involved in those early game uh, fights that they ultimately find themselves stuck in storm or stuck getting a, a poor place in a zone so they really need to play pay close attention as big mo finally begins to rotate <laughs> luckily he's able to get out of this one at least for a little bit able to pick up those stink fish and he, he's a player trailing him right Ooh. behind, but no, looks like Shiggy is also looking at this fight, waiting for something to happen. And that's Kauzi who's right in the middle between two. It's going to be who gets the last shot there. It's going to be Caillou who gets the elimination on Kauzi. Multiple players wanted that. And oh my, Caillou is just a nuisance right now. He is the player <laughs> that you absolutely hate to deal with in these solo matches. Yeah, Caillou being relentless here as Big Mo just trying to get the refresh here on Caillou's elimination. Caillou saying, no, this is my stuff, my territory, and I'm going to make you pay if you try to take my mats. Now, tuning in with the elusive Rhino. Not, not just a Rhino, this one's elusive, and it's 1346. So be careful, as he is now getting out of an engagement. Looks like he was able to deal a decent bit of damage there. That's Swoley who he checked in on earlier in the game. No one really doing much right now. We're, we're, we're positioning ourselves. We're starting to posture for these later zones, putting ourselves in positions. And a lot of these players are going to regret getting in these mid game fights because that means you're not doing super well towards the end game. If you don't have the heals or the mats to put yourself in a good spot and continue to rotate, unless obviously you could farm players. Some people like to farm players. Oh, just like that, you see Doxy immediately going down to Blastor as Blastor just farming away there in that zone. Look, like like Gud said, right, the opportunity is there to to go up against some players uh, in the area, and that's just uh, that was the smart play there for Blastor because clearly coming out on top. But remember, just like Gun mentioned, you have to be careful. If you're if you don't have the material, the ammunition, the weapons you need to be successful in the mid and late game, you're ultimately not going to have a great game. And so the the focus should be making it through the early and mid fights uh, or avoiding those early and mid game fights. So ultimately, when you get to the late game, you can get those eliminations there. And trust me, there will be eliminations to get in the late game. Uh, especially if you know where to look, you'll you'll be picking up tons of eliminations. Just finding the right players, taking the right shot. Sometimes all it takes is a simple AR tag, and then you get yourself an elim. 
We see crazy GG's picking up in the limbs. Snaxy gonna go down there in the feed to crunch. And we see Igna right ahead of Swoli, our second place player right ahead of this rotation path. And now take a look at what's going on over in Sweaty and the nearby area where everyone's posting up. Who's grabbing those nice positions? And it looks like hide and seek is one of those few players that are right on a, a hilly position. I wouldn't say a mountain, but I call it a hill. Yeah, a bit of an advantage, right? Obviously, the elevation changes make for a different game. But uh, speaking of a different game here, you see Jeff. No shield in the inventory, little material in the inventory. Will this be a, the game that Jeff goes down, or will he come back from a shambles situation and win another game? That's going to be the question here as he begins to rotate forward towards Sweaty Sands. And... He's in a really good spot now to potentially hold a player if zone pulls even further south. But the unfortunate part for Jeff is we see the storm surge coming into play. He's 22 below. He's trying to sneak a player. You got to be careful with all these guys around. He's jumping right in the box, and this could be all for Jeff. Someone's getting in his box. He hits the shot, but oh. not going to be enough. And down he goes. That's our top, top player out of this match, and that's Metavan, one of our top five players who's taking him down. Yeah, I believe he walked away in third or fourth place last game. Uh, so Medivan definitely changing the tides here as Jeff is now out early and not able to put any kind of significant points up on the board. Now you see Clovey, though, looking to rotate here with a truck. I, I got to say, while vehicles are great rotation items here in trios, in solos, they're a little bit more risky, in my opinion. You can e It's easier for you to get tagged up, for you to get focused. Whereas in trios, at least one of your teammates can fire back and uh, it makes more sense to travel with three and take the risk instead of just traveling by yourself. Ultimately, though, we'll see how cars play out in these games. Now, though, you'll see things that are playing out in people's favors. Sea Bear. We watch Sea Bear closely. We've seen Sea Bear in chat here today. So thank you for coming and hanging out with us, Sea Bear. And uh, now it's all about making something happen and making a comeback because he's got 65 points on the board. So a big game here can turn everything around here for pure sea bear. You got to remember, these are high school students. So I'm not even sure a lot of them are able to drive. So they're going to have to walk most of these zones <laughs> unless they're breaking some rules. But sea bear, big mo hanging box to box. Really, we get to tune in with Dirty Mott. We see Caillou able to get an elimination there onto solution. So Caillou not stopping, continuing that aggression. And we are playing a holly zone. So this is a good zone to have height in if you want to grab multiple elims. There's so many positions that you can just grab and knock players down. We'll see who's able to grab that early height position. You don't want to grab it too early in solos. You know, fifth zone may not be the play, but maybe, maybe six. We'll see, depending on where you're at. Now, Big Mott, he's positioning himself already on the north side of this third zone as everyone else is getting ready looking for their rotates yeah and, and right next to metavan too i gotta say that's gonna be a dangerous position here or there for him to be in because metavan metavan has been aggressive he's definitely tried to take some of these fights uh no matter what the situation may be uh so we'll see if he's able to survive now though you see nug just trying to survive as well a decent loadout here but no additional shield that's gonna put him in a tough spot as now console bot just tries to make his way in. We watched Consulbot and I believe uh, Flucam actually fight last game. Ooh. And Consulbot is actually going to be the one that comes out on top. A nice hit there on the edge of Storm, ultimately resulting in Flucam going down. So unfortunate for him. But Consulbot says, you know what? I got 122 points as of right now. Let's go ahead and put another 100 on the board. Let's go. If he actually is on console, that's quite impressive. It's a little harder to play than some of these top end machines that a few of these players have. I did see Curix go down in the feed. So one of our players in the top five is also out. We've lost Jeff, who was in first. We lost Curix, who's in fourth. Opportunities for players to jump up the leaderboard now as we tune in with Nug. Yeah, looking at the situation, there's so many players stacked on top of each other and so much room for them to move around. So it's going to be tough to see what happens for these players as they begin to rotate. And you see actually in Storm, Joe coming in quite late and ultimately getting himself targeted by these other players. Now we get to see who's on the right 
the right side of zone and the wrong side. It looks like Holly Hedges is where it's going to pull. And we get to see Patake up on the high ground looking to play this very high position. A good bit of materials, but much harder to hold this position when you don't have multiple players with you to stack up those mats. We'll see how he can hold this position and how he wants to play this if he's going to give it up. And a lot of it depends on where this first moving goes. It all depends on are you going to be able to grab this first moving zone and hold a high position or is it going to go over? You know, we'll see a fifth zone all the way down on the south side of Holly, not in Patek's favor. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be in his favor. You, you see the way that this zone is unfolding. Uh, you have to be cautious. You, you have to be weary, especially being on the edge here. In zone number four, you kind of want to either be closer to the center or you're, you're stuck trying to take a 50-50 shot or not even a 50-50 shot as to is the zone going to pull towards you for number five? Because realistically while you are on the edge you could get it pulled in your direction but it's very unlikely that you do hey i am a fan i i i always talk about not in solos because i think it's a little different but putting yourself in a spot to claim fifth zone and a high ground position because i think that wins you games if you're playing a potential high ground position in fourth zone and you pull fifth that's how you're going to win those games obviously when you're running low on materials don't do that you're gonna need way too many refreshes and stuff to be able to make those plays but zone is beginning to close we see everyone hanging out here in holly hedges looking like real estate and the market is getting kind of crowded there might want to be a time to move out of holly hedges based on where zone pulls yeah especially when you see people like metavan off of the distance just by himself there's dirty mont right next door to, to metavan oh actually a couple more players there uh, as it begins to rotate around so but still clearly not as congested as the rest of zone is oh no we see pixify taking some damage there from storm surge he's gonna need to get some damage off here quickly he's looking to take any kind of shots that he can because he's 59 below so one shot two shots can and turn it around here for him but he needs to do something quickly looking in the distance you see suedify you see some of these other players that have stepped up in big big ways as pixify begins to rotate look if i'm a player that doesn't have to worry about storm surge and sees somebody rotating with that big purple beam above them i'm gonna focus them it doesn't matter if they're full built or not and that's what we're seeing now with pixify oh yeah it's blatantly obvious you see this pink thing come down and igna is like hey dude just taking a med kit out in the open thank you i'll take that one now he's <laughs> able to pick that elim up and it looks like new beb is going to be holding the high ground position in zone now we check out two players looking to make this rotation tough rotates when you're this late storm at your back other players nearby nerf is gonna hit some shots needs a little more than that hopefully he can grab a few of these cabbages quickly not gonna happen and now he just has to focus on this rotate but with the materials where they're at he needs someone else to get himself into zone without spending any materials yeah agreed and honestly with our first place person being jeff out early in this game it really is anybody else's game to, to step up and, and take one of those top spots we could definitely see a lot of stuff going on here nerf face just trying to rotate through you see all these other players just above trying to make something happen shots coming off on every single wall finally finding himself in zone now he can focus on the med kit now this is going to be tough for them this is zone six this is not going to be easy for them to rotate through, especially considering the amount of players that are left. So if you're not careful here and you don't use those uh, materials wisely, you could ultimately find yourself back in the lobby. And right in front of him is Igna, the player that has a potential to take over Asian Jeff with Jeff going down early. Now we see new Bev all the way up there on the high ground. He's holding this position, ethical moving through the zone. Metavant getting tagged up on his rotate. Pluro also getting tagged up and he's below storm surge damage. That shouldn't be an issue though, but the issue oh. is the player in his box and he goes down. We see Metavant goes down early. So lots of opportunities to move up the leaderboard here. Hunky on 123 points and now we're checking in with Patek on this rotate in sixth, sixth zone. 
Yeah, he used to take, just trying to rotate. Does not look like he's going to be able to make it in. Or if he does, he's going to be very, very weak. He's going to need to get the elimination. He does. Paytech gets it. that nice elimination. Gets a refresh there on the health. But it's still not a lot to work with. He's going to have to rotate fast. He's going to have to continue to go around other builds. He only has five build or four builds now remaining in his inventory. He has to be smart with what he has remaining. And he's going for the medkit play. He's got to get this off. No, he's not going to. Another player runs into his box. They're both taking storm damage. He might be able to get that Elam due to storm. Now, zone is bouncing back. This is perfect. He can stay in somebody else's tarp, pop this medkit, give himself some HP, and actually make some plays. Right now, he's way too weak to get in the face of another player. He's alive and well once again in this tarp and this is a free rotate as long as nobody pops in with one build he can't hold the wall and sigma's right on his back yeah and so now you see another player on your back and it's kind of the question of is that player going to push you or is that player in the same situation as you where they don't have much to work with and it looks like they're they're gonna actually take the engagement here you see it's actually sigma versus patek just trying to get some shots off here on each other but nothing is landing as we switch over to patriot who is doing the opposite and just chilling hey just chilling is where you want to be in these zones and it looks like patek is going to be able to take down console bot another elim to continue this run he drops the tack shotty for this blue pump shotgun and now is going to look to heal up finally gonna have an opportunity to grab some extra loot and materials and now we're seeing how the zone is playing out we have sway to fight up on high ground gopher on front side of zone see there also joins him on that side oh no but patek goes down there kazi is able to take him out and we are down to our top eight crunch sway to fight hackers so many players going head to head so many players indeed and we talked about sea bear earlier and, and how he needed a big game and it looks like he's been able to hold on here into the later rounds now kind of trying to dominate the low ground here against crunch and golden you see shots coming off from every direction sway to fight on the high ground so many opportunities here for these players you see patriot look it looks like struggling to rotate forward it looks like patriot's gonna be stuck in storm a little bit here as suedify is watching for him suedify realizes patriot is there and is just trying to get some tags off on him go for it down below as well this is it folks the final moments here of this game as there are only five players remaining Patriot looking to get in the box. He's only got a few builds. Going to be able to piece up that player. He takes down Heckers. What a play. Put that one in a highlight reel. But now it's not over. He's going for more Elims. Oh. Gopher's in his sight. Gopher's going to go down the storm. That's another Elim and a refresh that he desperately needs. We're in a top three situation. Patriot above Golden. I don't think he knows that there's another player in the lobby. He's going to look to get in here onto Golden. He has a few builds if possible. Swaytify putting the pressure on from up above. He looks to drop him down. Not going to connect there. Patriot a player in his box golden able to pick this up and can sway to fight close this out a clean 1v1 there by goldini but it, now it's all up to sway to fight to close this out or goldini to clutch this up all right it's sway to fight v goldini neither have heals in the inventory they have to take the fight off and they do sway to fight not only held the high ground but walks away with the victory royale quick little dub there by Swedify. You love to see it finishing up that game on high ground. Sometimes it's hard to close those out, but props to him for yeah. taking home the win. That was a really good game. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. That was an insane game there for him, but let's dive into some replays. Let's watch some of that action back. And there it is. Seabear jumping into boxes, getting big pumps off on these players and making his way towards the end game, which was nice to see there from him. That was another fight there with Consulbot. Great stuff. See Nerf face just getting some eliminations there as well. Patek in those final moments, getting that elimination to just stay alive in those in that last few seconds. Yeah, he did everything he could, just continuing to chain together those refreshes, keeping himself in the game. A beautiful peace play there by Patriot. But it all comes down to Swedify V Goldini and Swedify cleans this up, takes the dub. Love to see that one there, Panda. You love to see it. I mean, so much action there in these first three games, but guess what? We still have three games remaining. So stay tuned as we jump into a break.
and we are back to the play versus spring 21 high school championship finals featuring fortnite uh, again panda somebody's gun bringing you all of the action here throughout these games now we are officially halfway through and let's look at these leaderboards and look at that we talked about it right we talked about one game can change it all for jeff and it has happened lana has now taken over jeff's top spot here with uh with one game and that's all it took to change up this leaderboard yeah able to switch it up and grab that top spot you see you fall one game and now you're able to take that top spot continuing that consistent placement only one in single digits for that average placement but lots of players we saw go for there in the end game and suedify after that victory royale able to get up into the leaderboards so everyone now making their plays we're starting to see what the big time players are and who are the pretenders in this game yeah we're definitely seeing it and and you can see uh, how much one game can change this leaderboard this format is so rewarding for players that are consistent i i gotta say this right so looking at the overall situation it's gonna be exciting to see who comes out on top especially with igna now taking a first place spot yeah able to secure that and a little bit more he's playing super consistently right now scooping up those elims and we're halfway through the tournament now everyone's kind of settled things you figure out where you're dropping or you haven't i mean maybe you try dropping one spot didn't work out you tried another one didn't work out and then game three you like somewhat made it off spawn i don't know yeah if you're one of those people sorry you know you, you'll find a spot quickly go check i'm pretty sure replays are available you can go in look find some open space on the map go grab it claim it for your own or just take a, a quick little screenshot of this right here and figure out what's open and what's not yeah i'm gonna say this though in solos it's so much tougher to find an open spot especially at this point in, in the round you you got three games in people have already figured out what has worked for them what hasn't worked for them so now it's just about capitalizing on that as Swedify looks like he's going log jam and maybe that's why he's able to walk away with that epic pump shotgun and, and do so much damage in these games yeah Swedify doing really really well now tuning in with uh one of our more notable players here today we talked about asian jeff Crazy GG's is a player who has a number of earnings and has consistently been able to perform at a competitive level in comp Fortnite. So what can he do here today? 137 points, not at the top of the leaderboard, likely in our top 50. So we'll see uh, how that plays out. Yeah, and it looks like I'm getting word that bouncers have made their way into comp midway through the tournament we are watching right now so if that is truly the case there can be some craziness going on throughout these games regardless though uh we will see how if that actually is the case and if it makes an impact because you already know bouncers are so incredibly powerful in fortnite so and there it is we see the bouncer plays taking full effect like we talked about before bouncers are officially back and the action is just going to get that much more exciting oh boy and we just had the eu dream hack finish so that could have been timed up to queue with that you know that way a little bit of change right after the tournament ends and right here in the middle of the high school play vs tournament now everyone's gonna have to adjust we literally just got put into a mid new meta mid tournament so how are these guys gonna be able to play this out don't know man uh, i you gotta go back to uh back to your roots with the bouncers yeah and, and look at him switching to the bow and deciding to shoot the bow instead of the ar that just shows you how much more accurate the bow is in comparison to the makeshift assault rifle because we already know that that assault rifle is tough to use fortunately for him though he's not gonna have to worry about in that engagement anymore as he can just now freely loot up flush factory you we talked about it before flush is a tough drop to take uh, especially because there's not a lot of loot to work with so if you're not careful ultimately you're you're setting yourself up for a poor mid to late game 
definitely not the best spot to be, especially with how many people rotate on pass to try and get a nice little upgrade. We see Nug waiting for this player to walk by. Misty Meadows looking even more contested than earlier on in these games. Four players as opposed to three. We got a couple people up in the mountains. We can see Lacey is one of those players nearby. And Nug not having the best of performances here today. Only 37 points. I'll have to check exactly where that is on the leaderboard, but not where you want to be. And Colin is in a similar situation. Yeah, looking at this, though, you, you know you can come back in these l later half of these games. However, it is definitely tough when you're down by that many points. We're almost at the 300-point mark for first place and second place. So I can only imagine what it would take to come back uh, that significantly. However, uh, you you know you know as much as I do. It's so hard to call something somebody out in Fortnite and say that they don't have a chance. And then we've seen it happen where they just turn around have some insane games and then ultimately put them back in contention but remember it's top 50 that go on to the play versus cup in june so make sure if you're one of these players out there that's what you're going to be fighting for all you have to worry about is fighting for one of those top 50 spots and that's not difficult to do it's just all about playing this game smart uh, or playing these games smart throughout the rest of this yeah just go chill in a bush farm some placement points get some mats you know there's possibilities you don't even need, necessarily need to get elims if you find yourself enough heals storm surge though playing a factor maybe not be being able to do that now that i'm actually thinking about what i'm saying but ignore me you know <laughs> i don't actually know what's going on but noel does he's looking for a potential elim here and so is everyone in this area lots of eyeballs on this engagement we see a, a few players down to the south on those mountains looking like someone's just gonna get on past and Cozy, Noel, both of them needs to rotate. This is a game of patience right now. This is a game of patience. I mean, look, Fortnite is a game of balancing patience and aggression. You need to know when to be patient, when to play it safe, when not to overextend. And then you also have to know when when to push because sometimes if you're not the aggressor, you're, you're automatically putting yourself uh, in a place where you don't want to be. And that's what we see here with Storm. It looks like Storm is on the defense and it's not working out in Storm's favor. And Storms is not having a great tournament here today. Going down early a couple of times in these games and looking like he's in a poor position right now. He's got enough mats to continue fighting this, but the player down below him doesn't want to let this up. We'll see if he's able to actually heal up and fully get all of this HP. Right now, not looking like you want to be in that position, but now we're checking out the elusive Rhino, who's switching up his skins in Game 4. Yeah, Rhino, we saw a little bit of work from in previous games, but just not as much as you want to see if you are this player, right? Now, though, it looks like Storm, Rhino, now it's back at it. They just need to continue to fight and continue to see who's going to come out on top. Hydra, though, no points on the board is now stuck up against big mo and, and that's not a player you want to fight against we saw how well that he did in the last game if he's even just replicating 30 percent of that he's going to be able to take out hydra pretty easily yeah hydra is able to get some shots off there but big mo does not want to let up that big pressure in this engagement we see the bounce pad coming through this is right outside of flush factory Big Mo able to get some shield off Hydra going for the same thing. The storm is coming, so Hydra needs to make a play. This is not in his favor as far as the total HP goes. Big shots come through. That's going to change it. Hydra may be in the driver's seat here with Big Mo right above. He's going to go down oh. the storm. The med kit unable to be popped. Yeah, what a turn of events. You, you, you would think that he had the advantage there, Big Mo. Just able to, to, or Hydra, I should say, able to turn it around here as Big Mo ultimately falls. And uh, now it's all about being able to make it through. It's kind of, again, a weird rotation for Big Mo to come all the way out to flush. But nevertheless, it happened. The fight took place and Hydra has now come out on top. Now we check back in with Nerfus right here at one of these big mount mountains and it's looking like this is where zone is gonna play here another central zone so these guys are getting pretty lucky we have often seen a lot of edge zone plays and games 
Doesn't look like that's going to be the case here today is multiple zones pulling near the center of the map in a good spot for most of the tree or most of the solos. Yeah, looking at that, the overall setup here in Colossal, I wouldn't want to be here, to be honest. Look at how many players are just waiting, clamoring for the opportunity to, to get some tags off on each other. And there it is, just as quick as I say it is, as quick as the shots come off here, as Patek has now to need the, the need to back up and just try to heal up as much as possible. And now he's on the back foot, trying to give himself some space. The ability to disengage is something very underestimated by a lot of players. Everyone can shoot shots. Not everyone can find ways to get away. And it looks like that Causey and Noel fight, where both of them were just staring at one each other, has finally ended with no Noel going down, Causey picking up that elimination, Patek dropping him into the box, able to get that shots onto the player. He's right in his box. Nice preemptive peace control but now losing out on that trade. Yeah, but still, it looks like he's going to be able to, to disengage for the most part here from this player. And uh, he has the heals he needs to heal up and keep going. But he has to be careful because this player is not letting go. He is just continuing to pressure up here on Patek. Patek now, I think, in a place that he can heal up a little bit. because I don't believe uh, 89NX knows where he is. <laughs> able to sneak away and hide get that med kit off that's exactly where you want to be right now you know get yourself back to that 150 hp and give yourself a fighting shot within this engagement and it looks like 89 doesn't want to let this up he's going to continue to look for this fight and now it's all up to protect to try and disengage here but just going to keep rotating on around this is ring around the rosie as at its finest and they just keep going around these old builds yeah, and I think 89 had enough. He's like, okay, I'm tired of trying to chase this guy. Like, I can't get him. Whatever, I'm leaving. And so you see him back out of there. But the tech, honestly, at some point, you have to you have to wonder why he doesn't turn around and shoot back. Because he just, that player was relentless. And if he didn't disengage here, that fight would still be going on for quite some time. Yeah, now we're choosing another player here who's in a poor position up at Craggy Cliffs. Eden dropping some bouncers in a oh. box and he goes down rip to Eden Timbers cleaning him up and now we're tuned back in with 89 X Yeah, 89 look 89 was applying the pressure doing a great job uh, of getting tags off there uh, on Patek But ultimately now he doesn't have that elimination and he's only 90 damage above the threshold if I'm 90 da damage above the threshold, I'm not comfortable. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to try to get some tags off. Obviously, I'm going to be safe about it. I'm going to be careful, methodical. But you still, you need to know that that's going to be a concern for you. And if you're not paying attention to that, especially with 83 players still up, you could ultimately end up falling to Storm Surge alone. He does have some bandages, does have a flopper, but no additional shield in the inventory tells me that you know what this should be a big concern for him yeah there's plenty of people nearby if he wants to find shots and now we're tuning in with gopher who is one of our top players here today he's down below storm surge not something you want to see if you are a player looking to compete i believe gopher is currently in fourth place going into this fourth match so he's in a bush now chilling looking for those potential tags but Everyone is based and boxed up. He might have to jump into a full engagement if he wants to grab one of these potential Storm Surge tags. Yeah, I mean, look, there's so many players around. There's still so much opportunity, and there it is. He actually, Jay gets the wall there, too. It looks like that player was just kind of leaving the wall open, not sure what he wanted to do in that moment, and Jay took full advantage of that, and I don't blame him. If, if you leave yourself open like that, you're going to get you're going to get focused. You're going to lose the advantages there. And that's what happened there for a second. Jay not quick enough to to take advantage of it and does get another shot off. Now this player just pushing up in random ways. I can't even keep track of what this player's doing as Jay just continues to try to take shots off. He's in the box. The shots are going forward. And he's got him so weak. And this player just continues to fight back. Jay now needs to disengage a little bit and just try to heal. But one shot will change this game for either of them. 
one shot in either direction and the player goes down. Yeah, it looks like Sablazo able to win that engagement, at least give himself a fighting chance going into it. And looks like Gopher, I don't know what he just did, likely had to make some crazy Storm Surge effort play. He paid for that one, wasn't able to get the elimination, paid for it in HP. Now in a really poor position and still a long way to go in this game. Yeah, fortunately for Gopher, he, he was able to turn it around with Storm Surge, but now that it's no longer a factor, it's like, was it worth it, right? Uh, Caillou, though, and the elimination feed, getting an elimination there on Sailor Trend. So, so much action still taking place as players continue to fall. You see Gopher now focusing on, on just getting material. At this point, that's what you need to worry about. You need to make sure, okay, Storm Surge is done, right? Your, your mindset should be, I need material. Because if I don't have material, like Patek here, I'm going to find myself uh, not set up for success here in the next few moments. And he's based up right next to the NPC. So I'm assuming players are wanting to go engage with that NPC, knowing it gives you anything from loot to a weapon to different heals. And uh, I believe this is also, yes, this is Raz, which could... Be used for a oh no oh. way Speaking what did i just of... watch the god rng okay. and oh and he riffs and he riffs another player here patek not only turning around his game because of the npc in, in the sense of getting that legendary F, or legendary pump shotgun he also ends up getting a nice rotation into center zone and look at that patek is now set up for success here with 200 points on the board that is incredible I, I was just about to say you can use raz to use it as a rift and just as i say that he goes and grabs the rift another player trying and wishing he had a rift is echo <laughs> very weak literally one shot and he goes down he's got a mini if he wants to heal it off he continues to look for the rotate and goes for tags i'm confused about this play especially with so far to go and down he goes i no surprise to me, he either could have stopped and healed or continued to move. Stopping there to go for the shots, definitely not the play. Definitely not the play at all. Didn't protect himself. He tried to take shots. I mean, look, ultimately, I would expect that player to go down. The focus is obviously going to be on him because he's completely open. So th that's the last thing you want to do. And speaking of things that you do want to do, Beast seems to want to get tags off on this player as now Dryzo is the focus of a few players from up above, too. We get to see Cooper picking up one, Blast grabbing an elimination as well. Poor Dryzo just holding on. No one's really trying to do anything except just spray him out. Nonetheless, he's still alive, still at least in a better position than Lacey is right now, who has, who's got two hop floppers and now pressure's coming through and that's another player in a similar position. I think that's actually Strizo putting the pressure on the Lacey. So changing it up Ooh. and down he goes. Strizo picks that one up. A nice refresh and elimination there. Yeah, and Beast just trying to rotate and take advantage of the fact that they were all fighting and then it ultimately gets tagged up anyway. He is able to get up the hill a little bit, but no, this player says, you know what, Crunch, I'm going to I'm gonna beat up on Beast. I know that you're in there, and I'm going to take advantage of that. Oh, but he goes down. He thought he had the advantage, but little did he know Beast was ready to pounce. And I think that was Crunch that goes down. That's a player that was currently sitting in third place. So lots of our top players going down early in this game. Again, giving other potential opportunities to these newcomers in the top of the leaderboard as Beast shows us, hey, bounce pads are back. Nice little rotate here. That's uh, interesting to see. It is interesting to see, to say the least. Uh, and look at this. We talked about coming back after a, a game and Caillou in one game goes from 29 points up to 109 points. So definitely a significant turn of events here for Caillou as he continues to try and, and keep that momentum going in these last three games. Because this is it, folks. The first half of this tournament is complete here for the East region. So now it's all up to, to these last three games and up to Caillou to be consistent.
and everyone is on this south side of zone. There's so many people stacked up right on top of one another next to this hill. We'll see where fifth pulls. This could either be really good for all of the juice down in this southern side of the zone, or these lucky players on the north side could punish everyone. It does go south. So these poor players up to the north are going to have a tough time rotating unless, unless lots of engagements happen within the two players or the players box to box right on the south side. We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, and if you look in the distance, you see our game one and game two winner in Jeff still alive here in game number four, trying to turn everything around here for him. And uh, look, this is your chance. This is your chance to make some things happen. And uh, now you need to continue to be consistent because look, we saw how one game can, can turn it around for a player and how it can dethrone even a, a player that won two games back to back. So he needs to be consistent and he needs to do some things right here in game number four. Definitely does need to do that. Beast having a solid match himself as well as a solid tournament thus far staying alive here with 227 points, likely going to continue to pick up more of those placement points as they come on. Already in this fifth zone, wonderful position to be. Just a little nervous if I'm him, especially with where he's at, that I'll get buried below a bunch of builds, and it'll be hard to make this next rotate and this storm. We see Curix picking up an elimination there. On to Andy GG's. Igna, our current first place player, making this rotate in. Has to use a lot of materials. We see does have the bouncers in the inventory and successfully makes a fifth zone rotate. Yeah, looking at Igna's inventory, he's definitely set up for success. If he remembers how to use bouncers, he's definitely going to be in a good spot here. Uh, quickly trying to take one of the three medkits he's got in the inventory. That's going to be a good sign for him. Uh, but all these other players are close by and it does look like he's going to be able to pull a bit of zone so uh looking like it's going to pull a bit in his favor that's a solid position here for him so he's able to build out get himself ready and uh keep the momentum going looking at the overall picture though you see cloudsy taking out some other people there in the distance you see cooper getting the elimination there on cloudsy man it was just back to back action there for cloudsy and he just could not catch a break Unfortunate for him there as he goes down after picking up the elimination. Able to at least get those few points and then Cooper picking up another one there on a Strizo. Igna recognizes this is going back through some old builds. He's going to be able to use these and move through it pretty quickly. Has to be careful. You never know whose builds those are. Curix up on high ground using those bounce pads. Blaster down below him and Zone is pulling down this mountain across the river. A very difficult zone to rotate, but we have these bouncers. That's going to change things up. Looks like Storm Surge is going to become a factor unless we see lots of eliminations. This Blaster takes down a player. Nice elimination and refresh there. That's exactly what he needed, but no small shield potions, and that's what you want at this stage in the game. We're going to throw down some bouncers and move on through. Spending those materials, Blaster gets himself to the front side of zone, rotates in, takes deep breath, box up, you're chilling. You are now in zone. Let's look for a refresh. Yeah, and he's going to need a refresh. You, you could see Blaster was a little rusty there with the bounce pad. Uh, and, and ultimately, it resulted in him getting tagged up a little bit. But fortunately, he's going to still have him. He's going to continue to use him as he pushes forward. It looks like Hydra now making a big comeback after he struggled out of Flush Factory. So this is a good turnaround for him. Uh, but players all bouncing around. The excitement, the chaos is unfolding. Who will come out on top here in, in game number four? It's something we haven't seen in a while. And like you said, Hydra having that pop-off game to put him up the leaderboard. We see Caillou able to get an elimination there. Hydra just staying alive here in zone, going to use those bounce pad, continuing to move. Blaster is popping off five eliminations thus far wow. and moving through. Metavant still alive, takes down Hydra. And now here comes Blaster looking to make a play. Someone's on his wall. Blaster needs to get in. He's able to, Ooh. no, he goes down and it's Kyrix up on the high ground, pressuring everyone down below. Caillou owning the low ground. Taffy and Hezix fighting this out. And now, oh, down goes oh, Hezzy as well. No. 
<laughs> and he goes down the bouncer misplay i, I can't imagine that these players are ex number one we're expecting bouncers to be back in the game but for expecting a situation like that huff huff situation indeed as now curex and taffy on the high and mid ground just trying to fight out as caillou continues to dominate the low ground takes a ton of damage here he's gonna go ahead and take a moment up to heal up now though you see curex it's all up to curex versus caillou who will come out here on top the final moments here folks caillou very very weak does not have the advantages health wise curex takes high ground again they're just exchanging shots but no caillou goes down and curex takes match number four quick quick clean up mm. fight he takes down the final two players and curex pops off there after having a poor previous match he was like hey Hold my slurp juice. We're chilling. We're coming back and we're taking this game ourselves. But again, Hydra season. Poor start, but a phenomenal game there in that last match, Panda. No, absolutely. You saw he had no points going into this game and it now ending this game with 80 plus points. So a big turn of events there in game number four. And that's what you need if you're if you're so far behind like that. And uh, speaking of uh, exciting plays, Curex turning everything around here as he takes the victory royale with the bouncer play back up to high ground looks for Caillou and just gets the quick shot on the side I gotta say exciting stuff overall definitely exciting that was a phenomenal match played there and and everyone was throwing a little curveball I mean even us I was yeah. not expecting the bouncers to be thrown in but now these players have to deal with it we're gonna take a quick break and then we will be right back with game five
Myself to the edge, lying in the way. Been testing myself by the worst. I've been pushing my mind to the most. I've been loving the people around me, but I'm so paranoid. I'm so paranoid. And we are back to the play versus spring 21 high school championship finals featuring Fortnite. And we're back diving straight into the leaderboard. We want to know, right? We saw tons of stuff take place in game number four. And we want to know, and we have got it. Jeff has now redeemed and retaken his spot in number one with Igna. Not too far behind there in number two. 
Yeah, let's go. Reclaiming your top spot. And we get to see Hollow is a name that has just appeared in our top 10. Haven't seen that before. Gopher still hanging strong. Beef or Beast also still hanging in the top 10. And we can just see, look at that average placement. It just shows you how difficult it is to consistently perform in these lobbies. Now we're checking out 11 to 20 here. Yeah, and we've seen Flu Cam do a lot of good stuff. We've seen Crazy GG's quite a bit. We've seen Blaster quite a bit, but it, clearly they haven't been able to have one of those standout games or one of those breakout games. They've been consistent, which has put them in the top 20 situation here, but ultimately they're going to need to do a little bit more if they want to break into the top 10. Yeah, no doubt. You got to continue to play these games out to the best of their abilities. There is so much nuance that happens at the end of a game that can really be the difference between going down in let's say 30th versus fifth and it's only a matter yeah. of about 30 to 45 seconds of remaining alive and i say only like it's easy to do but it is absolutely one of the most difficult parts of the game is staying alive in those final few moments it really is the pressure is on the anxiety of the game the exhaustion coming through because listen you might not realize this, but it is not easy, not only to play the game for extended hours every day, but solos, solos mentally, physically draining. And uh, it, it's definitely taxing in those final moments of the game. So it's all about who can truly keep that energy from start to finish. Oh yeah, but hey, us, somebody's gone panda we'll keep the energy with you guys the entire time we have a couple more games left of na east to decide who gets to go to the play versus cup in june and compete for that scholastic prizing right now i am I, i'm pumped you, all right let's ask you here panda we have two games left does a team or i guess a, a player take over that spot from either igna or jeff or is one of those two going to walk away with it? Mm, so I definitely think Jeff, with the, the level of consistency that he has presented, is going to maintain a top three spot. Hands down. I don't I don't foresee someone taking that spot away from him. However, anything goes. With, with game five and game six still remaining, anything truly can change. And we're going to see that happen right now as we dive in straight with It's Red. Haven't seen red too much here today. We'll have to see what he's made of as he's going over towards this electric tower right outside of dirty. A nice place to grab potentially some free eliminations as players rotate in. Not when you get a primal AR. That's not really exactly accurate in these lobbies. You want something a little bit better than that. We'll see if he's able or willing to push into one of those POIs. Only 25 points there. And then we see Slurks up at, oh, this is actually contested. Interesting. It looks like there's uh, two players landing at this single radio tower. So unexpected, if you ask me. Yeah, unexpected to say the least. It's funny, I saw when we zoomed in here, I saw Slurks automatically taking a fight. And I was like, wait a minute this is not right and there it is it's actually nasa rooney uh trying to take that engagement with him but slurks uh clearly having the advantage there uh as far as loot goes he was able to loot the building and, and probably going to come out on top there now though shiggy getting a quick elimination here early on and it looks like he's right outside of misty meadows another player is hydro we tune into him seems to always be involved in these early game fights he's able to win some not always able to walk out the victor and others and now hydra likely contesting the same person unless someone else is switching it up here who is that that is v8 scrapper yes going up against the same player here no one wants to give it up just yet these guys are continuing to go at it and we do see hydra trying to find some shots here not able to connect he only has the builds available to him that he's already placed down. Nothing left. Does grab two builds quickly right there and looks to get some extra loot right now. Yeah, he's going to need to be careful, especially considering we don't know what the other player has. Scrapper definitely healthier in this situation, but not by much. 
Um, so if he has better uh, material, he definitely has every advantage here in this game. Hydra, though, just trying to, to stay alive, build out, and get some more material. Hydra does have uh, the inventory to definitely take this engagement. It's all about just coming out on top here in these early fights. You see Scrapper coming down, trying to take some shots. You see Hydra taking shots. And, and really, this is not good for either team. Even though they are pretty close to zone, they need to end this fight fast if they want to continue to loot up before zone starts pulling in. Yeah, and a lot of what this comes down to is just hitting your shots and the angles you take as Hydra hits the shot there. He's able to get some damage there on the Scrapper. He's looking to go for the chop, trying to drop him down. Scrapper does not connect on his shots when he drops down. And now Hydra, again, going for the chop. Not much else he could do at the moment with only zero builds left in the inventory scrapper continuing to build up he can't have much left hydra follows his own builds trying to get a shot at scrapper and again going back hiding underneath this is a prolonged engagement Ooh. big shots there by hydra who's able to walk away with this hydra needs one more shot to take it finally some shots there by scrapper and now we're gonna go for the big pot here and down he goes hydra wins this engagement in game five and Hydra definitely very excited about winning that engagement here. And, and I got to say this, Scrapper had to have found uh, a Llama early on there because the amount of sheer material he had to work with was just absolutely insane otherwise. So, and now we switch over to Riddix. Riddix quickly getting an elimination, the opposite of what we just watched unfold here, uh, which is good for him. He only has 108 points on the board. So these next two games mean everything for his his scoring definitely do and a nice poi here of risky reels to grab all these mechanical parts as we see dawn taking down streiso there not able to continue and grab more eliminations now we're checking out hecklers who just jumped into the top 10 now wanting to get involved in some more action or possibly not either way the player above him looks like eureka doesn't want to let this up you know, it's usually the heckler that's a heckler, but it clearly uh, Eureka is trying to be the heckler here as he just tries to take the wall, take the floor, and the fight ensues. Remember, this is an early game engagement, folks, so they do not have a lot of material, a lot of ammo to work with. Uh, but actually switching over to Eureka, it looks like he's got everything you could possibly need. Now I see why he's the heckler versus heckler. <laughs> He's going for those shots there, wants to find this elimination, likely was able to get some of this damage done earlier as we see Sailor Tranks goes down, Solution going down as well, that's Noel picking that one up. And Eureka wants to make a play to get back up, I'm going to take a quick peek, see where our top 50 is at as far as points go, and see where we're at as far as the rest of the lobby, that's 112. So, if you're above 112, you're currently moving on to the play Verse Cup. If not, you got work to do. Yeah, and honestly, that's not a lot. So, even for someone like Eureka, they can definitely turn this around. So, 112, now we know. Now it's just about being consistent in these final two games as Eureka just jumps in the box there against that opponent. Now, though, it looks like Star is getting some shots off here on this player. He's got the other player weak, but unfortunately he's taking the exchange here on Echo and uh, actually looking in the kill feed, you see Eureka does get a heckler. So he was able to get that elimination and it turned around for them. Now let's see who's going to come out on top here between Star and Echo. And we see new Bev able to get an elimination there on the feed. It looks like Star is going for the high ground, get some shots in, and that's going to be enough to eliminate that player. He did his work early and just cleans up that engagement. Yeah, cleans it up real quick, which is ideal in a situation like this. You, you see he's on the outside of zone. There's not a ton to work with there as uh, Nazaruni actually gets an elimination there pretty quickly too. It looks like on walk FNBR. So that's a, a good change of events, but he does need to get out of storm. Fortunately for him, he does have a couple med kits in the inventory. He's going to be able to fly away with the stacks, but still the last thing you want to do is spend too much time in storm or you're just going to mess up your game. And now we see he's using that steamy stack to get him moving on past. He could also hit the spire, continue to bounce 
off of those positions and rotate through. Looks like he's just going to take whatever he can get out of the stack and continue moving on. Again, not a bad position to be at. 175, clearly above that 112 mark currently that we're looking at. And looking like uh, some free loot coming through. It's always a surprise, but it could have been a trap there set by Curix, who he is right on the outskirts of. Yeah, absolutely. And, and looking at the inventory, it does look like he actually is going to have the first epic variant of the infantry rifle that we've seen all day. We've seen the infantry rifle used, but we haven't seen somebody be able to find an epic or legendary variant. Now, changing the tides, let's see if he can make some things happen that, ah, with that weapon. Now, though, Sancho uh, looking to, to take some shots here uh, against Hostile. So these are two players that we've watched pretty closely, but haven't seen a ton happen from. But fortunately for Sankoko, he is above the 112 points, meaning that he is going to be able to make it over to the Play Versus Cup in June. Yeah, good for him. And now Andy GG's is right on the outside looking in as far as top 50. He's going on to Nasaruni, and we, we see this fight. We know Curix is right nearby. Both players have med kits, so not really going to be an issue of chilling in Storm. But that overall positioning is going to become key. You want to grab all of those spots. Nice little big pot from the NPC. The gifts keep on coming here for Andy. GG is able to grab the big pot and now we're checking out Nasaruni also with three med kits in his loadout neither player has to worry about the storm damage and even thinks about shooting at someone while he's trying to rotate in the storm looking at the mini map it looks like we have a long way to go before we get into that next zone as well panda yeah the the zones are are, are taken away here at these players and, and the nerves for some people are settling while the nerves for other people are getting higher, right? When you're when you're in one of these top 50 spots or you're significantly above like the 120 points, let's say, you're definitely feeling more comfortable, right? But once you're dropping below those or you're really close to that 120 point uh, threshold, you're definitely becoming nervous because you know game five and game six is everything to you. You can't go down early like we see there with Eureka got some eliminations early on but unfortunately that aggression resulted in him now going back to the lobby now we're tuning back in with hexy a player we haven't really watched too much again using that infantry rifle that you just talked about welcome the dinosaurs coming in hanging out wanting to get involved they wanted some screen time and now hexy continues this rotate first zone that we're seeing in this area going over towards retail in these central mountains some lazy lake action going on as well we'll have to see who this favors likely i believe crazy ggs landed over at retail i don't know who was landing caddy we haven't really checked in with that side of the map besides that one moment earlier yeah and, and looking at this situation you see it storm surge is now active hexy now falling victim to storm surge and if he's not careful uh he's gonna get affected by it. he's gonna take a lot of damage and that's the last thing he needs to deal with at this point especially with the only amount of points that he has now though cooper taking some shots off on sigma sigma very very weak and if he's not careful he's gonna go down to, to the focus and there it is he ends up getting eliminated there to crazy gg so again crazy gg understands that he needs to continue to step up here and be consistent if he wants one of those top 10 spots and we see Cooper right here. We have Hollow as well. Joe just rotating on pass. And it looks like Crazy's going to go for the loot. But Cooper wants to take advantage of this. I mean, one headshot, bow, and your game changes so, so quickly. Crazy spends a little bit there to get towards those materials. Hopefully, it's worth it. We don't know what the loot pile was. But once you get over there, is it worth whatever you just spent? I don't know the answer to that question. And it looks like... Uh, Cooper, controller player, a little bit of controller drift right here. You got to love the controller drift, especially coming from a controller player like somebody's gun. But ultimately, you, you, you see these players playing it out. They're doing their thing. Blue cam now rotating with the truck, trying to get into zone. And looks like he's struggling or not struggling to get there. No, no one's paying attention to what he's doing. And of course, as I say that, he gets beamed curse or caster's curse to say the least uh, as we watch him barely outside of zone man that's tough to see you'd hope that you'd be able to make that 
otherwise, you know, it happens sometimes. You, you run into some engagements here. And Flu Cam, like I mentioned earlier, was able to qualify for DreamHack with his duo yesterday. Placed, I believe, 35th. So not the best day, not the worst. Looking to have a better day here. With 227 points, I'm saying he's pretty easily in qualification position. That's where you want to be. And he's going to continue to play aggro right now. Yeah, he's definitely playing aggro to say the least. But Flucam knows that he needs to be consistent. You know, placement points make a bigger deal than eliminations. But you also want to balance eliminations in this too. You see 227 points on the board. Obviously, good to go for a top 50 spot as of now here in game number five. But still, anything can happen. You need to, you need to stay consistent. And I think Flucam realizes that. He's going to continue to focus up, try to get the shots where he can, take the shots uh, as he can, and uh, hopefully get himself in a zone because he's not looking too good as far as zone goes as of right now. I think he should be all right here. Maybe grab the truck if he wants. If not, good old left foot, right foot express getting in to the uh, the zone, and he's waiting. He wants this player behind him to make a move. I'm not sure why. You could easily have priority over him, but he might be looking to get an elim. Again, I, not sure why. We, we look at the mats, we look at the loadout, don't know what you would receive from this player. That's Red's FN on this rotate. And Febin right here as well. Looks like Flucam dove a little too early, not able to get the sneak that he wanted. Ooh. And Flucam's the one that pays for that. Yeah, he's definitely paying for it, but fortunately for him, he does have some shield in the inventory. Uh, like I said, he's he's going to have to rotate fast here. Not in the worst position outside of zone, but not in the best either, especially considering how many players fall on this side of zone. So you need to be careful, especially rotating through lazy, because there are going to be a lot of teams, or a lot of players, I should say, that have stacked themselves up on top, like you see with Patek over there. And Flucam is going to be one of these few players on the outside Hopefully, going to be able to make this next zone rotate. We see Star positioning himself as well. So, it's going to be the mountains. It's going to be lazy. Everyone looking to grab their positions early on. As Star is going to go look to refarm a little bit. Grab whatever materials he can. And we can see that's Beast AFK all the way up on the main building in lazy. He wants to grab one of the best positions currently in zone. We'll see if it pulls in his favor. Because if it does, he is in an amazing position. Yeah, and look, you see the, the position so far, right? But anything can change. A player can rotate on top of you, force you to move, make you lose material. So while the position looks great right now, and as these zones continue to close, there's still so much to unfold here in this game. Now, though, zone four revealing itself, and unfortunately, it's not going to be in Star's favor, as Star now has to rotate here uh, just a little ways, but still rotate nonetheless and should be in a good position as far as this zone goes if he just white lines this in it's gonna be right over that hill he was looking at and now we look at what patek is doing over on this main building here in lazy lake i thought that was beast afk beast may have left already yeah it looks like he's gone and moved from that position so now here is our highest position not really in zone right now so it doesn't matter that He's up above everyone else. Doesn't matter that he has the high ground. It'll help him get some tags on players that rotate. But the later you wait, the more you're going to get tagged up. And, oh, we're going to see some bouncers coming through. I haven't seen a, a bouncer rotate. I, I keep forgetting that they're, they're happening, Banda. <laughs> I do, too, to be honest. And then you see the bounce. Like, as we say that, of course, the tech turns. And then you see four bouncers positioned there as Patriot double bounces and makes his way in his zone. So it's so exciting to see them back. I'm not going to lie to you. Whether they're supposed to be back or not is the question, but I'm excited to see them back nonetheless as Patriot finds himself now in zone. And look at our, our observers just hooking us up. Start talking about bouncers, giving us a nice double bounce here by Patriot. I mean, you can't ask for more. And you see Agent Jeff picking up another Elim. So you Asian Jeff fans in chat, yes, he is still alive. He is getting a limbs and it looks like Sablazo is going for the high ground currently. Yeah, look, high ground is a little early to take in my opinion. However, you can still position yourself nicely to 
get the high ground if it pulls in your favor you just got to be careful because you don't want to use too many materials at this point as a solo team because remember when you're in team modes right it's different you can start kind of focusing zone or uh, high ground in fourth maybe fifth right but as a solo player you only have so many material to work with so you have to be careful as Lacey gets tagged up one shot there for Lacey and it looks like star and the other player are just gonna back off and that's quite fortunate there for Lacey because normally when you get hit up that big everyone continues to do that and fire away with the AR ammo Ispo goes down there to flu cam Lacey able to pop a med kit here and remain alive still alive and taking some damage it looks like getting tagged by storm surge for a second now it gets slightly above it. He was looking to make a desperation play. Now uh, he's in by the skin of his teeth right now. Yeah, but fortunately it looks like the zone. Oh, he's not going to be able to get the med kit off the shots exchange, but no, Lacey goes down. Jacko being the person that takes it actually out Fixo and Al. Al has gone down again. Al just struggling to stay alive here as Noel is starting to pop off. He takes out star here in the elimination feed flu camp grab grabbing material trying to stay in his layer and then begin rotation does have the bouncers to get ahead so he's gonna need to to either bounce or play quickly or he's gonna have to avoid using the bouncers at all yeah, and he was looking like he wanted to use some of those extra materials lots of extra mats but now he's just gonna follow the rotate there by docs he accidentally gets thrown into zone not gonna be too bad i'll take a tick or two and then continue on moving Beast AFK goes oh. down, Flukam jumps in the box, and that's another elimination. He's taking down players. We see Hydra gets an elim, Crunch gets an elim as well, and so many players popping off in the feed right now. Yeah, look, that is just insane stuff taking place. Flukam showing that he is a top tier player. He's applying the pressure. You've seen him do well in DreamHack. Now he's sitting here in the play versus cup, just making it happen. So much stuff is unfolding here as he takes more shots four eliminations on the board taking out players left and right this is what you want to see as flu cam does a little dance and he continues on his rampage hey let's go show him show him what's good we're, we're out here having fun we're just playing video games right now nothing wrong with a little bit of emote action Blue Cam has the peppers now, as well as potential bouncers in his inventory. But it's Sablazo up. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sablazo just absolutely getting deleted there. Uh, what? I, I can't even like begin to express what just happened. Healthy, had high ground, and then all of a sudden just eliminated back to the lobby. That's how solos go. And if you're not careful, you could follow his footsteps. That's exactly right. In the blink of an eye, you could be deleted. Now we tune in with Patek here as Crazy GG's takes down Curix and Hollow goes down. Those are two of our top 10 players going down really quick right next to one another as Patek goes down and that's Asian Jeff picking up the Elam. Ethical dropping down using the water to not take fall damage and has to realize he has no materials left to continue to build. Big Mo, he's been one of the big favorites here on the cast, at least personally for myself. Not looking so hot right now. Yeah, he's definitely, he's doing good points wise, but but ultimately has been not as consistent as some of these other players we've watched. Dasharuni actually going down and no, as we say that Bev, uh, switching over to Bev. Bev, another crowd favorite here in chat today. Look, players are going down we literally watching this elimination feed just continue to show names that we were looking forward to seeing as now we switch over to caillou who is just trying to make his way in after taking a pepper and these leaderboards have to be getting really close there in the top 10 top 20 as we narrow down in these last few games bev takes down console bot crazy grabbing elims there onto flu cam and cowsy goes down as well Caillou continuing this pressure, just firing away. He's on the pepper. He's, he's moving quick. He's a speedster, but going to be looking to get into someone's tarp. The final few builds decides not to jump in the box there. Boxes up himself and then looks up at high ground. Who? That's crazy GG's and Bev right on his walls. 
Yeah, Caillou definitely knows how to handle these situations, knows how to take care of himself, especially as a solo player. Now it's just up to him trying to, to make the comeback. You know, we saw how he struggled in those first couple games. Now he's making a big comeback here as no, of course I say that and gets quickly eliminated to no well, uh, but nevertheless, still a great game for him. Now looking at Andy and Bev, they are just trying to fight on walls. They're trying to make anything happen, but it looks like nothing's able to convert and no one as of right now, it looks like has the high ground. The only one on height is going to be the one that finally realizes it. I think Noel is there, Riddix is there, but no, actually there's a player way up above that's crazy GG's and he's poised to win this match. If he could just stay up here and spray down Nerfus, Andy, both looking to just narrowly survive. They have a few builds left to their name and a shotgun that is going to help them get these eliminations, but let's not forget. TNA Asian Jeff is still alive. Nerfus picks up an el elimination there. Asian Jeff, our current leader at the moment, should have taken back over first place, depending on how many Elims have come in through. Andy, Nerfus, still going. Yeah, and look, the action continues to ensue. Nerfus just trying to get some shots off here. You see a player above. You see Jeff getting another elimination there towards Andy Noel just above here. If he's not careful, he could end up getting taken out as Jeff is trying to crank his way up. And no, Jeff gets pumped down and out here for this game as Nerfus now just continues to rotate. What a tough zone here to ro rotate Ooh. through. No, he gets the elimination. Players just continue to go down. It is a 1v1 situation. Who's about to come out on top? I have no idea. It's going to come down to who has the more heals. And it looks like Crazy knows that he has those cabbages. Needs to be careful not to take any bit of storm damage. He only has a couple of builds, so he can't necessarily sit in zone for too long. Here come the heal play. He's going to back off, use these cabbages. He knows that he at least can out heal storm for a little bit the bouncer up there by nerfus but not gonna be enough crazy ggs gg take game five gg to crazy ggs man what a game there for him and a huge turn of events right so we've seen great performances from him in the past we we saw that he had a bit of a slow start here in today's championship rounds and championship finals but ultimately coming out on top able to take it home now we'll check out tons of eliminations happening all throughout the map we just saw this earlier from hydra season able to take that elimination early on riddix one of our players who made the end game there and kind of popped off star we saw this one just elims coming all over they're like oprah delivering elims to everyone yeah for real and you know what's nice we also get to see angles that maybe we missed on the broadcast so these replays are always nice to see flu cam diving into the box man the endless regret uh, aggression from flu cam is really what makes him stand apart and makes his gameplay just that much more exciting here in these replays and andy another one just putting in the work here andy relentless man every time we switch to andy he is jumping into somebody's box hey an aggressive player love to see it Riddix is the one who came out on top of that one. We see the final shot there by Nerfus, but in the end, it's crazy GG's who's taking this home because of the heals. Nice, solid win for crazy, and he's at 350 points. I would expect to see him up there on the leaderboard. Oh, 100%. We're going to see crazy GG make his shift up to the leaderboard, but before then, we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned, and we'll bring you all the action shorts. To dream, believe in strength. Now I'm the only one, only one. 
Testing myself by the worst I've been pushing my mind to the most I've been loving the people around me But I'm so paranoid, I'm so paranoid
we are here the final game of the play versus spring 21 high school championship finals here on the east coast featuring fortnite so crazy crazy stuff we're gonna dive straight into the leaderboard here and we're gonna focus on this top three you already know the man myth and legend jeff himself with a significant lead here in first place with crazy ggs right behind wow and igna still up there curix flu cam with a big match putting himself in the top five but jeff crazy igna that is your top three but right behind them curix literally one point behind igna i would definitely expect this final match is going to come down to who wins it it looks like jeff unless he goes down early again is going to clearly take the lead in this tournament but there's plenty of room for opportunity. We've seen it's not as easy as you would expect. Not, any, not as easy whatsoever. I mean, you've seen some great names here on these leaderboards. You've seen Beast, you've seen Consolebot. You even see Caillou able to make his way from 29 points in game number two all the way up to 10th place now on the leaderboard. So again, anything can happen in this final game. And I'm excited to see if there's going to be some major shifts here on the leaderboard definitely excited to see how this plays out let's not you guys no more waiting let's get in we got some more game action we are ready this is our final match of the day get up it's time let's go it is time and diving in with hollow getting a, a bit of a bridge drop here i gotta say these bridges for so for a solo player have a significant amount of loot and in my opinion probably better than flush factory as a whole oh okay big big words coming out of there and I guess when you get one of those super chests, it definitely helps you. Already getting those minis full shield there for Hollow. And you don't really have to worry about it. We, we've seen Hydra and I believe it's oh it's, it's V8 Scrapper, I want to say. I've been fighting yeah. the entire time over there. We see Peace Police taking out he Hexy early on. So one of the first few players going down. Tough day there for Hexy. I've seen him go down early in the feed a few times. Hopefully, though, he's got gotten enough already to get himself top 50. I'll give you a quick check, and I'll let you know in a sec, Panda. Okay, sounds good, because we definitely got to know as far as the top 50 goes. We, we got to know who at least is going to be going on to this play versus cup, because I'm super excited for that as well. There is so much stuff coming here from play versus i'm i'm overall impressed with what they've been able to put on and we look there it is the elimination feed is starting to dwindle already it does look like 98 players made it into the game and players are just going down kobe loves gg taking on uh, it looks like uh somebody at the hydro dam and i'm trying to see who's got the health advantage but he's spinning around so fast it's hard to tell and he does hit the shot there looking like Ooh. he's gonna clean that up and the final match of the day goes over to scrapper there just in case you guys didn't see in the feed scrapper takes down hydra season so making sure we keep track of that engagement that is over and little update hexy was currently in 40th place he had a hundred and give me a second 70 points so we'll see if that holds it's, it's gonna be close no doubt yeah it definitely is gonna be close it, it, honestly things can change but that's not enough to to secure yourself a spot uh, especially with this format because if, if one of those other players they survive just long enough based off placement they can easily turn it around in their favor now though you see rhino feb and beast all next to each other and no one moving a bit of an interesting strategy to say the least a rhino being the first one to just fully disengage here probably the best move here for him oh yeah i i would want to get out of any of these early game fights because you never know who's nearby right someone could need a huge match and could just start w keying you or you could be one of those players that i i don't want to get in any engagements right now i'm sitting in like 45th 35th place and it is really close and all you're trying to do is make end game we'll have to see how it plays out sailor trent's one of the players on the outside looking in looks like taffy was also on the outside looking in when we tuned into him he had about 140 points so right there on the edge and both these players really need a solid match today in order to get themselves in the top 50. yeah and that's just not going to be easy for them to do in in one match in total right 
looking at the overall scenario here, they, they got a lot of work still yet to come and a lot of potential still yet to come. But considering they're not in zone, they don't have great loadouts, or at least Sailor doesn't. It's not looking good, at least at this part in the game. No, not whatsoever. And I guess all these players, we, we can consider them lucky today. We got no caddy zones, no southeast corner massive mountain zones. So if I'm a player, that's probably a win. Unless I'm, I'm landing caddy, then that's not exactly what you're looking for. Um, for everyone else, though, the fact that I don't have to go up and down those massive hills definitely a huge w for me yeah i'm definitely gonna agree with you there you, you know when you have to oh you change the terrains when you talk about it and ethical just getting the car thrown at him talk about a, a terrain change <laughs> indeed watch out that's like the hulk the hulk just throwing cars at people but instead it's done in fortnite um we've got some beast boy skins that that monkey beast boy skin kind of like the hulk but I would definitely take the Hulk in a fight over that Beast Boy skin. Just saying, you know? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you there, right? I would definitely, uh, definitely do the same. Uh, but speaking of some crazy stuff going on, Corndog is probably having the most action we've seen for him all day. And that is a complete joke because he's just hiding behind a tree. But he is trying to make something happen there as we switch over to Nasaruni. Not too far away, believe it or not, and right in the same point range. So Nasaruni really needs to continue to stay alive here and get those points if he wants to continue to survive. Oh, and the banana skin on the outside. You got to watch out for those guys because you know that they're, uh, they're in a different mindset than you right now. They're not as worried about what's going on, and it looks like they're looking to get in this box. Nasaruni is able to close that off. He takes some big shots down to 45 HP. The banana skin's not going to stop, though. Peely never gives up. Shots come through. Not going to connect. Nasaruni looking to get more minis off. Drops down. He can no longer go any lower. He's out of mats. The shotgun shots need to connect. Now he's aggroed the NPC. That's on Nasaruni's side. And it all comes down to the final shot. Both players are weak, and Nasaruni Ooh. cleans that up. Down goes Eureka. Thank you for playing. Eureka, man. Listen, we, we saw you do some things last game. We know you love W Keen, man, but that just wasn't it, Chief. As you went down and you are down and out for the rest of this tournament. Now, though, oh, an unfortunate scene of events as Caillou goes down to Cloudsy there in the elimination feed. And now Star is over here in, in this area as well. If you don't know, this is the Flush Factory area of the map. And uh, this is where we saw a lot of action take place there with Scrappy. Uh, and others and now they're just trying to uh it looked like a quick engagement maybe star rotated in that direction because there's no way star got that loadout from this area yeah he might be able to have upgraded and uh came through grab maybe a few cogs or something like that yeah um or just even got oh hello okay a little surprise here love to see that that's um that, that's a loot rng at its finest here but panda i mean if i'm star the, the rng is on my side i already have a game winning loadout plus i'm in zone now i just have to make sure i'm staying alive yeah so listen if you have basic knowledge of positioning with that loadout whether it be max material the legendary or uh or the epic version of the pump and the assault rifle like you're set to go and that's what you see there for him He's good to go on all those fronts. Now, though, it looks like somebody else that may be good to go is Cole as he's struggling, bouncing up and down here in this truck with those monster tires. Gun, what are you thinking of those tires? Oh, they're so nice. They help you get over the non-paved roads so quickly. The only issue is when things like that happen. They tend to be a little bouncy. The hydraulics on those guys are tuned up a little more to my liking. So you got to avoid hitting the, the, the hops with those guys. Yeah, because when you start hopping, you really don't stop. It, it just keeps going. But look at it. It's our fan favorite here, Mr. Jeff himself. Uh, just getting some significant tags off. 423 points on the board. That is so insane to think about. As Cullen is one shot, he's just trying to make something happen here. He's trying to get into the box here. 
it, it, this is a tough position to be in, especially considering that the mats cannot be plentiful in this situation since this fight is so early on. And now he's looking like all but cleaning up this fight here. Gonna, oh, no, nope, not grabbing the walls. Not grabbing it again. Looks like Colin's got some solid ping there. We do jump in the box. Thank you, Colin. Ooh. That's gonna be all for you here today. And Jeff grabs the loot, moves on past. Thank you, sir. We're in a wonderful position here. He's now just gonna have to rotate in. And this is one of the lighter games. I don't wanna say it's much lighter, but not looking like we're gonna have Storm Surge be an issue. It, the warning may pop up, but I don't think we're actually gonna see it play out. And here's Timbers, a player who's on the outside looking in currently, at least when this game started. He's picked up some loot, not gotten any points, but he needs to survive and get himself through this match with several points otherwise he will not be in the top 50. yeah and i'm gonna be honest right gun his health is is a bit alarming he has tons of shield in the inventory which is nice don't get me wrong but with only one hp on him all it takes is a tick from storm damage like literally anything can just send him back to the lobby and guess what this is solos guys there's no teammate coming to pick you up yeah that's unfortunate now we get to see what he's going to do to address the situation. Pan and I have talked about it, and now Timbers has to make a move. There are some campfires nearby, but like you said, he can't take a storm tick. So my priority, if I am this player, would be to find a good rotation in the storm. He wants to talk to the NPC, also hit this campfire, give himself some extra HP, and I think we'll be all right. He has nothing to boost it. There we go. Farm it a little bit. Now should be able to get that and get... A little bit of HP back, and we see Crunch picking up an Elim in the feed. Panda, I believe he said he was winning this game. I am I correct? You are correct. Remember, just moments ago, we we saw him come into chat, Crunch, say, "We are, I'm winning next game. And I said I'm going to hold him to it. And hold him to it, we will. If Crunch does not win, confirmed he does not win this game. Uh, that's all I have to say about the situation. Now, we'll have to see Timbers making this rotate in. Starting to scoop up a couple of placement points. Not really where he wants to be. Crunch picking up another Elim. Okay, okay, he's fragging out in this final match. And now the Corndog Man in a good position in Boney Burbs. Yeah, I mean, and good points there for Corndog, right? We, we talked about him a little bit earlier. We saw him just kind of chilling out by the tree beforehand now a little bit more active to say the least but as far as points go corn dog's in a really solid position to take a top 50 spot he just needs to stay alive maybe get another elimination or two and he will solidify himself a spot in the cup the play versus cup coming in june so hopefully that works out in his favor we'll see as it unfolds here as uh, another situation unfolds here with star getting focused by another player you see it's actually big mo uh, somebody's gun talked about him, loving him, and now he's actually getting focused by some wolves on top of Big Mo. I don't know which player is more deadly. Is it Big Mo or is it these wolves? <laughs> I would definitely say it's going to be Big Mo with how aggressive he's been playing. He does hear the fire, though, so Big Mo gets going in the back of the tarp. Star wants to solidify and secure all of this nice loot right here. He's sitting on some extra bigs, some minis extra metal actually extra of all mats that's what you love to see if you're a player and that will allow him to build out big give himself a nice safe plate space but as i say that zones not pulling in his favor doesn't matter how much loot you have there you got to rotate my man yeah you definitely have to rotate fortunately for him though he is gonna have the bounce pads in his inventory so if he uses it correctly he's gonna build himself out with that metal right then he's gonna position himself in a place where he can just bounce her into zone and be good to go. He just, he does though need to be very, very careful of other players focusing him as he bounces. Very true, very true. And a little update for you guys. Looks like Fortnite status said that the uh, the bouncers should not be in the competitive playlist. They will be taken out ASAP. So just so you guys know, that is what's going on. We will see bouncers at least in this game for the conclusion of this tournament so it doesn't matter what's going on they are in the game 
we'll have to see we got west coming up next here panda and if you guys were excited for east we're going over to the wild wild west to see some of the best high school players out from west so stay tuned if you're here hanging out if you enjoy some fortnite action don't go anywhere after this we still have this final match and much much more to go as eden jumping in a box and quickly jumping on out you know, it's funny. You, you see him jump in there, super excited to be a part, and then all of a sudden it's like, nope. Like, you you just <laughs> jump out. And uh, fortunately for him, though, he does have the heals. He is able to kind of recoup there uh, in that scenario. But honestly, if I'm this other player, I think I would have been more aggressive. Knowing that I had such a significant tag, I think if I were Corn Dog, I would have made sure Eden paid for coming in my box. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But regardless of who's paying the corn dogs are not on the house and now eden needs to rotate but oh okay taking him down with the headshot right there and eden's got a little ways to go but those elims are gonna help him pick it up and keep on keep it on yeah keep on keeping on man uh, listen that infantry rifle is disgusting if you if in the right hands with somebody that knows how to aim maybe maybe someone like kovax is a lot that thing is deadly, and it's exciting to see Eden be able to use it to his advantage. Now, let's see if we can get some more gameplay with it, as he has an inventory that consists of two weapons that were just added back to the game. Uh, what is... I, I don't know how... Controller just aims for you. Why do you need to... I don't understand what would be the point of aim training. <laughs> Listen, for us keyboard and mouse players, <laughs> we, we, have to, we have to put in... A lot to work on our aim trust if we don't we're gonna pay the price bro just switch yeah you know about that you see i have this thing that that scrolls and it's like in a wheel form and it's just the advantage is there whoo I, I can't give it up oh i get you i get you you like to play on a thing made for typing as opposed to playing video games oh no absolutely i respect it i respect it <laughs> Nevertheless, whether you're KVM or you're a controller player at home, we appreciate all sides of it. As you can see, we're both on different spectrums. Definitely on both sides of the spectrum. But, you know, I respect either way. This is not an easy game to play regardless of your input. So just jokes here, obviously, if you guys don't get that, sorry. But both <laughs> of us are just here having fun. We see Causey. Looking up at Seabear, again, another player that needs to have a solid match in this game with 117 points. Looking like, based on where we currently sit, at least 170, if not more, to qualify. It all depends on how the last few places come through and who actually secures all these placement points in this game. Because if everyone in the top 50 is the same people that are currently in the top 50... I mean, we're not going to change anything, but the bottom 50 t eliminates the top 50. We can see some huge switch ups in the f these final moments. Without a doubt. And I think that's what we want to see. Surprisingly enough, Storm Surge come becoming active. And it looks like Bev, uh, again, another chaff favorite from today, uh, is not above the threshold. So it's going to have to worry about staying alive here and, uh, and putting in some work. You see him going for the high ground here on this other player and and surprisingly not taking the engagement he does know he needs to get or he is actually now above the threshold my apologies so he wants just the high ground and he just wants to hold that position and he's going to be able to punish players from all around and i would love to see some hop flopper bounce pad action while we still can i mean <laughs> the absolute hops on that would be astronomical my guy would be jumping to the moon if we were able to do that Nonetheless, now we're tuning in with Nug versus Andy, two players who have been pretty aggressive, and I believe Andy is in a much better spot, and Nug has a long way to go. Neither player really connecting. They might need to be doing that aim training that you were just talking about because the shot's not coming through. Yeah, listen, sometimes if you don't get that extra hour of aim training in a day, you're, you're gonna be like Nug here. You're gonna miss quite a few shots, but no, it looks like he's gonna get tagged up quite a bit. Doesn't reset his wall and ultimately pays the price. Now though, you see Sipo taking storm damage. So is Taffy. Listen, if you only have three bandages in your inventory, you definitely have to do something else. You are not gonna be able to outheal the storm surge tags because ultimately it's just not enough. 
Hey, let the man dream. He's just trying. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna work, but he's trying. He does go for some shots there. I don't think that's enough and see you, Taffy. Tough situation regardless. Storm Surge, uh, if you don't have a good uh, early game, can really play in a factor in your, your mid to late game. And we saw it right there. Saipo though, actually being able to stay alive and was able to actually out heal the storm surge but look at the inventory no additional shield to put on himself and no additional shield going into the later later parts of this game i think sipo is gonna be looking for a refresh here wants to drop someone down holding one of those ramp plays now he's trying to go for console bot right above him and he does drop him in console bot able to get the ramp in not able to fully go for this elim here by ispo and it looks like console bot has escaped so ispo made a nice play and oh Someone saw all that happening, and now Ispo is the one in trouble. Yeah, look, if you're Ispo, you, you know you have a flopper. You know you're struggling a little bit. Now is your chance. You need to get an elimination. You need to turn something around in your favor, because otherwise you only have 10 builds remaining. You don't have much to work with. You do have a decent inventory, don't get me wrong, but you need to change something. You need to get a refresh. You need to get the health. You need shield. And the only way to do that is diving in somebody's box and getting one of those eliminations. Sometimes you just have to jump in. It just happens. You know, the controller mindset. We, we saw it a, a few seasons ago with players jumping in the boxes. Absolutely just going nuts with the different spray weapons. Now, it's a pretty common thing. We, we've all learned to use different kind of plays to get into boxes. Looks like Andy GG's doesn't even know someone's in there. And GG's goes Andy. Now he's gone. That's Swole. Oh, nope. That's not Swole picking him up. And now we see Bev still on the high ground. So he held it earlier. Still up there. And Hunky goes for it and absolutely paid. Yeah, he definitely paid the price for that. You see in the distance, Crunch still alive and, and, and trying to make something happen. He promised us he was going to walk away with the victory royale in this game. And we'll, we'll see if that actually comes out or comes to be the case as Hunky just takes a quick med kit. Players rotating from all around. He is above the damage special. He's going to have to worry about that. Jeff now back on the screen, the fan favorite indeed, as he just tries to push forward. He does have the shield in the inventory to heal up quite nicely. So he should be good to go, but he only has four builds remaining. That is a tough spot to be in, to say the least. He gets another nice tag off, but nothing significant enough to keep going. There it is, an elimination there for Jeff turning the tides here as he gets a little bit more material to work with. Continuing this rotate, he just keeps on moving and staying alive. Metavant goes down, Ispo, Peace, Police, all going down in the feed. And this might be a two-man race between Jeff and, oh, Jeff goes down. Now there is some possibility if Crazy GG is still alive, he might be able to take this tournament. But Crunch getting some elims as well. And just like you promised, he's still alive. He's vibing out here in this match. Yeah, he's vibing indeed. Now another player vibing. Console bot trying to make some things happen. Hunky going down. Doug taking out players left and right. Doug just trying now to stay alive as he takes out Cole. Tags coming off from every direction here. The layer, the layer changes here are going to be super important for these players as Blastor holds the high ground. It looks like Crunch actually has gone down. Crunch officially eliminated here in this game, unfortunately for him. But he did have a great game nonetheless. Al trying to get some tags off. So many things going on. He actually has the heals to spend a little bit of time in Storm. So if he needs to, he can definitely work that angle as well if you wanted to but now see bear looking to make a med kit play possibly look for height it, it might be free he does grab it only a few builds left the bouncer comes through not going to be able to hold this high ground position he could chop if he wants that he goes for the player drops down not going to die to fall damage and now the console bot is still up alive but no he goes down and it's blastor causey and it looks like Volksy and Seabear all are still remaining in this game. Can Blaster close this out? He's up on height. Looks like Zone's going to pull a slightly in his favor. Cozy on a pepper. He's flying through. He's going for the shot there on Seabear. Doesn't get the full elimination. He does clean it up right there. Can Blaster close out this match? It's the final 1v1. Who is walking away with the Game 6 victory royale? It's Blaster taking it home with 342 total points and the victory royale in Game 6. What a crazy turn there for Blaster. Held onto the high ground, ran out of material, and 
ultimately still was able to secure the game just a phenomenal performance there and what a six games indeed we watched here on the east coast dude those were absolutely nuts watching these players go from game to game we saw basically every game besides the two that asian jeff were able to win we saw a new winner and everyone was able to take over and now we're just checking through, we're rolling through all of the highlights from today because it was sick. I, oh man, some of the plays we saw from these guys were just incredible. Yes, yeah, so much action throughout these six games. You saw all the, the action and aggression from Flucam, looking at the shots he was able to secure, elimination after elimination there. And, and you see him just diving into boxes. He was just non-stop. He knew that he had the potential to make something happen and he went and made it happen very impressive now we'll have to see you know slight little drum roll coming through let's see how the final results played out i'm sure they're tallying them up as we speak right now these last few moments i i have no doubt that one of these players were able to switch it up on the leaderboard making some final plays especially in that last game get to see some moments from previous games here on and what a day. I mean, every single player deserves prop from beginning to end. Pure entertainment right here. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, right? Everything from that crazy GG victory royale we just watched again from Cole just getting games on Feb. I mean, the action was just nonstop. And it's nice to get a nice, solid recap of everything happening. Jeff diving into the box in that final game. I mean, Jeff was just such a dominant force today especially with those two victory royales back to back right in the beginning i mean that just solidified a top spot for him yeah and I, if i had to guess i'd say he probably takes home the top spot it was pretty close though both players or actually three players were going to be very close especially heading into that last game we had jeff crazy ggs and igna as well as curix had a shot depending on how that last game played out and blastor was able to take it home i mean he likely gave himself a solid top 10 with that victory royale. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. You really can't. You can't ask for more to say the least. I mean, look, the, the action we saw was impeccable. And I'm impressed overall. Like, Star is another another one that, that stepped up to the plate and did a lot in these games. So, look, we've gotten you the action. We've shown you everything that this replay has to offer him and, and you know what sometimes we'll show you some more clips we want you to see all the action that unfolded especially for flu cam having such a great game yeah and i'm gonna ask chat who you think your favorite player or favorite moment from today was what do you got is there anything that stood out to you based on what what i'm seeing going on i'm thinking we'll probably get some jeff fans there in the chat but Man, Pan, do you have a favorite play that you remember from today? Mm, you know what? I'm going to say the flu cam jumping in that box. The, the one where he came on the left side of the box. The guy was healing. He just dominated, harpooned in, and, and took him out super quickly. That's my personal favorite play of the day. Okay. Okay. What about you? Whew. See, I guess that I asked the question. I have to answer it as well. I was, <laughs> I was hoping... <laughs> that you know i didn't have to and actually we have the leaderboards so i'm gonna dodge that question let's see who won all right here it is folks the moment you've been waiting for the standings for naes and there you have it jeff taking number one crazy ggs taking number two and crunch tp taking number three he didn't quite walk away with the victory royale in that final game but still made a significant comeback to take that third place spot really well done we see sea bear console bot blastor putting himself up to sixth place with that final victory royale hollow metavant curix and igna closing out our top 10 what a day by them really well played i mean igna kind of stumbled a little bit at the end but he played so well to start off that there is no dropping him much further than 10th place i mean credit to him because he is now on my radar. This is not a player that I, I knew of before this tournament, but what a player and what a day for him. 
what a day man i mean look for all these players right we watched tons of great action go forward we saw gopher paytech we saw flu cam beast patriot and, and then caillou right in one game caillou went from 10th to 20th place just shows the impact of one game and what it can have a crazy